We got a show for you guys tonight. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of people probably still standing up clapping at home. Guys, please sit down. Don't like that match in the back room. Guys, it's going to be an outstanding show. As you can see, we have an amazing panel here. And I still have two or three more people joining us as the show goes on. They're running a little bit late. This is going to be an outstanding crossfire. I know a lot of you guys have waited for this episode. We've been talking about this certain topic for a very long time. And I've strategically placed that topic second. Because if I do what I did last week and I start the show with the hot topic, we'll never get to any of the other ones. I would have wasted the entire day getting all my notes ready for the other 12 topics when we're only going to get to one. That being said... Please, guys, take a second, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I am absolutely overwhelmed. You know, for what we do on this channel, and 140 new people joined in the past month. That means a lot to me, man. Honestly, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps the channel immensely. Hit that like button. A couple shout outs, real quick. Want to say shout out to Button Basher Podcast. He's uh, with the super chat, too, by the way. The super chat's working. He says, I'm supporting. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Honestly, Button Basher, thank you so much. He was on the show last week. Also, hooked me up with an outstanding Star Wars code on PC. I uh, can't say thank you enough for that. You know, mooching ain't easy. You guys know the situation there. The great Domino Zero, he says, the CMA approved the Super Chat. Don't worry. We'll find out soon enough. Uh, but if you guys will take a second, this means the world to me. That, that, that beautiful, look at that description that's down there. Will you look at that? You'd never know I wasn't that great in English class. Look at that description. If you look right above it is the join button. That's what a lot of people have been doing and joining the channel. And again, it helps the channel. It means a lot to me. And I just want to take a second and shout each one of these guys out one by one. The great Sir X Man, Judah Zook, Wooly Gamer, Mumble Ranting Gaming, Tyson Webb 509, True Witty, Big Chuck 777, Alfonso Carter, Brap, who's just getting done with a show, going to come over on this show. Jamie, Damien, the great Jimmy Harrison, who's here tonight. Andy Hart, Isaac Gentry, Red Hood 420. I did a show with him on Tuesday. Over Leveled Podcast. Go over and check that out. Ham Solo was on last week. He was on earlier today. Shout out to Ham. Rob Jones, Dad of War, Night Ripper 7, Toto Dope, Thumbs Thumbs, JC2030. Get this work! One of the best names in YouTube. Get this work. Ice Queen Gaming, RP Gaming, Passive Profit, Dexflex27, Lord Metroid, who's here in the chat. And one of our newest Mooch Maniac family members, Rabbit Got the Gun. Rabbit, welcome to the, the family, but it really means a lot. Our major Mooch Maniacs, he's back home. Thank God. Salayan Chilean is home again. Brian East, Jack Reeves, Julian Johnson, your boy Roy. Scolari Brothers, Smokes901, DC Gaming, Miko, Gaming with Persona, Jay Bari. You guys know these guys from What's Up PlayStation, and you're going to hear from the great Jay Bari real soon. They debut tomorrow again, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Go over and check them out tomorrow morning. That's how I start my Saturdays. Supreme Samurai, Tactical Gamer, Danelle Brown, Deck Ice Mini, Four Star General, Brian BAKA, Delirium Blades, and our VIP Mooch Maniacs, Button Basher Podcast, Snoop Will Pox Skate On, Domino Zero, Shadow Assassin, Strictly! Shout out to Strictly Gaming, the wise old gamer, and our honorable mentions are out there with a fool or a toilet. I know they'll be back. Marty the Ambassador, Bison, Chris713, Percolator9000, Hustle and Motivate. Great to have those guys back. Guys, come back home. And our forever Mooch Maniacs, Longshot316, and forever Mooch Maniac, the great Optimus Code. Guys, that being said, I happen to notice something right here. Gavin House, welcome to the major Mooch Maniacs. Gavin, thank you for hitting that button, buddy. It means the world to me. Gavin, thanks for becoming a part of the family. We've gotten so many great people. Look at this. We're already at 247. Please, guys, hit that like button. It means the world to the channel. But you know what really, really helps out is having an outstanding panel. I love the podcast, but really the show is nothing without this amazing panel that we bring together every single week. And, you know, he's probably exhausted. And I don't care. I'm going to put him right in the spotlight. You guys know him as Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. He probably wants to get a snack between his last podcast, but too late. Brap, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing tonight? Hey, Mooch, what's going on, man? Hey, long time, man. Long time no see. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. And, uh... <laughs> it's been 48 hours since we did a podcast <laughs> That's together. That's true. That's true, too. How yeah, you doing, buddy? But, Good to no, have you here. Great to tonight. be here, man. Great to be here. Great panel, too, by the way. This is going to be and, a you know, fun I, one. I, I smell this, 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 I don't know what it is, man. What's so that? I smell like greatness or something. Oh. I, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe Bari can help me out. I, I don't know. That's the new uh, fragrance, right? Macy's is selling it, Bari. What is it? That PlayStation fragrance, you know the vibes, you know how we get down. <laughs> I love it. I love the pause. The that pause PlayStation fragrance is coming out 
it, it, you, you, you can you can sniff it, you can smell it, whatever you want to do, rub it on your body. You can see it all over in that burning shores. And when you play these other third party games, but I'm gonna shut up for right now. Go, my bad, Moose. No, listen, I'll be honest with you. Brad did a great job. I'm gonna go ahead and say the great Jay Barry again from What's Up PlayStation. You guys don't speak from the heart, Jay. Great to have you on the show, buddy. Great to hear that you're feeling better, too. And there's no better time to have you here with with the news that broke this week and the games that are out. So, Jay, how are you doing this evening, buddy? Absolutely. I, I think the news made me feel better or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? too. Bad Xbox news and great PlayStation <laughs> news. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good recipe right there, man. But, yo, appreciate the invite, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the, for the well wishes and all that stuff. But your boy is here. We back on Crossfire. We're about to get it on and popping. You know what I mean? I see the Xbox dudes that normally be on Crossfire. All of a sudden, they got to work. But, I know. Uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I, I, preached, <laughs> I reached out. I yeah, reached I out. It. I went there. I went there. <laughs> I went there. At the, end of the day, at, <laughs> at the end of the day, man, we're going to have a good time, man. So uh, hit the like button. Share the stream out. And let's get the people in here, man. Let's get it. I appreciate that, Jay. Thank you. And, you know, when it comes down to it, especially when we're going to be talking about the issues with some beloved games that we've been playing recently, and, of course, what's going on with the CMA and what we're going to hear as things transpire with the EU and the FTC as we go, sometimes things get out of line. When things get out of line, you know who I call? The great Eric Jackson, the voice of reason for YouTube, the voice of reason for Twitter. Eric, I don't think you realize the weight that's on your shoulders, Eric, because if you were to ever leave any platform, it would be utter chaos and destruction. Eric, welcome back to the show, buddy. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing good, man. I'm happy to finally be here. You know, it's been chaotic and crazy down here in South Florida. Yes. But uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do my best, man. There's a lot of weight to lift. I feel like Starfield. <laughs> I got a lot of weight on my shoulders. <laughs> it is, buddy. And tonight's going to be one of those nights where we just need you to, to just smack the sense into some people. So, Eric, I appreciate you being here, buddy. It really means the world to me. And, you know, first time on Crossfire, and that's a me problem. That's my fault. That's my fault. Outstanding gamer. Love watching his streams. Love what he's, his contributions and what he's got to say on Weapon Wheel Podcast. That's 5.45 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday nights. Jack Move is finally on Crossfire. Jack, welcome to the show, buddy. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. First time on Crossfire. I appreciate y'all for having me, by the way. Yes, sir. Shout out to everybody watching. And uh, yeah, let's get it. All right, let's go. You know, and I always like to put the guests on the hot seat here. So I was going to go ahead. I have, I have a, a special... A special topic for Jack. I'm going to ask Jay first on this one, Jay, because I happen to know that you're playing this game. And Jack, you know, we follow each other on Twitter. And, and yes, Jay, Jack came out today and said, listen, listen, I'm not feeling this, some of this game and stuff that's going on right now. And this, this Star Wars stuff, right, Jack? You got a couple of things about Star Wars in general. That's, that's not your bag, you know? So, which is fine, yeah. by the way. There's nothing wrong with that. Because it's just, it's not for everyone. Everyone thinks you say Star Wars, you got to love the game, Jack. I see people saying that to you. And you're like, that's just not the case. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, that, I got some heat for that too. You, you know, I, like I said, the game look, you know, the games look dope. But I just, I never really been into Star Wars like that. You know, like no, it, yo, it, that yo, real talk. As long as I know Jack, most of the games that he has no right interest in, mm. when he's when he finally gets to play or whenever he plays, mm -hmm. he's gonna ah. like that game. He's gonna like the game. Yeah, well, listen. Please. So, so <laughs> listen. I gotta ask you, Jay, because what you're about to be on the hot seat for right now and talking about this game may or may not convince Jack to want to buy an escape. Jay, the oh, game... Oh, yeah, I might not sell it today. Talk to me. Yeah. Talk to me a little yeah. bit about Star Wars. I know you're playing it. You've been posting a lot of pics, videos up. I know what's going on. You got it on YouTube. You got it on Twitter. Jay, talk yeah. to me about the, the, the... First of all, let's talk about Jedi Survivor just as a whole, right? Where does this kind of take off from where we left off on the first one? And what are the good, the bad, and what's the ugly when it comes to this game on your recommendations for people listening whether they want to buy it or not? Yeah, story wise, it takes it takes pretty much uh like a couple of years after uh Fallen Order. Um Cal is more, you know, Jedi mastery, mm -hmm. um, you know, with his like skill and proficiency and all of that stuff. And he's more well known as a Jedi than, you know, before in the first game. But uh overall I I really I really am enjoying the game. Like if you enjoy the first game, I think you enjoy this game. Um story wise, how they keep the the beats and the pace going has been really really fun you know you have a, a classic like star wars type mission uh you know in the first you know chapter or whatnot or the first little mission uh that you have in the game which which is cool you know what i mean like like i, I can understand why jack not interested because he, he's not into star wars mm -hmm. but like when you play the game and you're into it i think you're going to have more fun with it but overall i feel like like even if you don't in, not into star wars you're still going to have a a fun experience with the game because the gameplay is pretty good um 
You know what I mean? If you enjoy like Souls type games and whatnot, it's a little bit more actiony, but it's like very similar to that. But <clears throat> my issue with the game is, is it's the performance, man. You know what I mean? It, it, you gotta call it how it is. Like the same thing I had with uh, Gotham Knights. Yeah. Like yo, these 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 companies, these developers, they keep saying like, oh yeah, we're gonna take away the PS4 version of the game. But yo, when the game finally comes out for the PS5 only, it feels like you didn't take away for the PS4 version. <laughs> you feel like you gave me the PS4 version. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. nothing nothing about this game screams like yo, I'm taking full advantage of the PS5 when it comes to like the the visuals and things like really? that. Really. Uh, and perform in my personal opinion it, it, it it's not a bad looking game but it's nothing where i'd be like yo this is yo we in the third year of ps5 you know what i mean i'm i, I want to get my my socks blown off you know what i mean no i do um, hear you and i on saw a visual you, level i saw your gameplay i've seen gameplay out there and shout out to uh bg bg posted his pc gameplay uh on youtube and i will say and maybe it's the capture card you can't go by YouTube. You can't say I saw something on YouTube and I wasn't. I haven't gotten. No, nah, but the to thing see. is, the thing is, like, I, I understand that, but that's that's a that's a cop out excuse too, man. Because, yeah, like there's there's times where I look at Twitter and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, you could definitely tell Twitter's compressing this joint. But in the back of your mind, I'm like, yo, that joint look good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. if if we're saying if we're just quickly going to use that excuse, like, yo, compression and YouTube and all that stuff, then you know it's not like a a wow looking game. It's not bad looking. But it's not like a, oh, like a Horizon Burning Shores. You know, I'm pretty sure when you booted that yep. thing up, you was like, holy shit, this, yeah. uh, this, this looks amazing. No, the thing you know popped I mean? off the screen. Yes. yes yeah, but like with, with, with Survivor, my issue with Jedi Survivor is like, I'm, I'm typically not like a frame whore type of dude. I could play 30 frames. I'm not going to complain about that, nothing like that. But my issue is that how inconsistent the frames are uh, within the game. So I am playing on 60 frames when it comes to the gameplay. But the cutscenes are already in 30. And it's not like it's a locked in, smooth 30. This thing is all fluctuating in the place. You see, like the screen tearing, you see the frames dipping, all that stuff. And then when you're trying to seamlessly go into the gameplay, it doesn't match up. It's, it's very jarring. And that's my biggest issue with the game so far. Everything else, I'm perfectly fine with. But I'm just like, I expect better when it comes to these these bigger publishers, these bigger developers, it's not no tinky winky small developer with respawn. They have grown. They have got much more funding. They got EA back in them when it comes to, you know, money and Disney as well. I'm like, I said, I'm not making, I'm not making it seem like the game is a bad game and it doesn't, uh, 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 you know, it's not like a fun, it's a fun game, Yeah. but I just look at it. Like I just came off of forbidden West, uh, burning shores. Then I'm playing this game and I'm just like, yo, Forbidden West, I, the whole time I'm playing that game, Burning Shores, I wasn't be like, oh, the 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 resolution on the frames is off. You know what I mean? I, I'm just like no. shocked that the resolution and the frames of this game is stable with everything that's going on in the world of of Burning Shores and you know Forbidden West. You know what I mean? Like it's just a different beast. And I'm like, yo, I'm expecting the same when it comes to these big developers, man. And they, they already knew that there was in a in a, in a whole bunch of bullshit because. Before the game came out, they already tweeted out, yeah, we're trying to fix it with a whole bunch of bugs and glitches and issues and all that stuff. And it's just not a good impression as far as, like, the first look of the game. You might have a great game in there, but, yo, these things matters to a lot of people that's spending that $70, that $90 on this game. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it, it, it just, it's just not a good look, in my opinion. No, you know, and it's funny that you say that because I haven't heard a lot of people really... There's been so many problems with, like the game crashing or there's just a lot of glitches no one's really mentioned what you said i haven't at least i haven't seen it in my thread uh brap uh eric i don't know if you guys are are you guys are either you guys playing jedi survivor or no you are not um i'm not playing it yet i do intend on playing it uh because I, I, I love the first game but um like i don't know if you've seen which i've been talking about this kind of thing um, on the timeline as, as far as there used to be a thing as like day one like, you know, you used to get hype. I'm going to be there day one, yes. you know, for this game. And now it's more like day one-ish. Like, I want to be there day one, but that's not really the game. that The, the game development is continuing after day one. Mm. You know, that's, so it's like a double-edged sword of, you know, the beauty of having, you know, online and broadband and the whole nine and fiber. It's like they can update when there's issues. But at the same time, a lot of devs are taking advantage of that they're hitting like the release date, but it's not really the game that they that we should have on launch day because it's like there's no new game plus. 
there's these bugs, there's these issues, like major things, not every game, but a good portion of them, if you think, you know, over the last year or so, have dropped. They're like, oh, you know, our apologies, we're working on this fix, we're working on this. There's a huge day one patch and all these things. So it's sort of like, well, I'll just continue playing what I'm playing now or jump on this other game that just got patched. <laughs> until this one is ready to go and i'll get to it in like a few weeks or so well that's what i was just going to ask you you kind of answered it already i was going to say now you're excited to play this game and at the same time you hear what jay said and you're like you know what maybe i'll just wait for another patch yeah yeah but you know yeah, the thing is they're going to patch yeah. the game up i mean right well, they what? already addressed it and it's like well damn you know but but that shouldn't be the case because you know here's jay jay put his money down he's ready to go day one yeah and he's not getting a day one experience He's having yeah, a this, this is one of my most anticipated games, like for this year. Right. Like this is like in my top five. But yeah, like it, it, that's just just how they treat the performance of this game. I feel like, like damn, like if it wasn't ready, delay the game. You know what I mean? Like I feel like this yeah. is supposed to be like a fall game. To be honest with you, to get you know that 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 frame rate uh, more stable. But they treating mm-hmm. these single player type games like live service games. You know what I mean? And I blame it on Game yeah. Pass. Yeah, I said it. I went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Real talk. I was gonna. I was actually gonna go there. I was gonna say this is. This seems to be a trend right now where you're seeing this, and you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I don't see. I don't really see a lot of it coming from Sony's first party that much." I mean, did a little bit of that happen with maybe like a Days Gone where we needed a, a day one patch? I get that, but like we are seeing consistent problems with a lot of third party. And Eric said it best. Jay, you put your money down. What? other field i don't care what it is that you put your money down and you don't get the product until maybe a week a month six months later when you get the final product i don't understand it's either they have unreachable deliverables when brap's a big fan of talking about this you know is is that the case is it that they put these timelines out there that they're going to be completed with these games and then they just can't meet it and they have to put it out there i don't really understand that I think you do more damage than good. You're not making extra money when you do that. People are asking for refunds. I, I, I just don't understand all that. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. You make less money. You're better off with a delay. I, I've been saying this for, and we used to all, you remember last generation, we used to all kind of really get down on any type of delay. But now we're all like, listen, just delay the damn thing. Because I don't feel like giving you 70 bucks and it don't work. It's not in the mood, you know? And it's yeah, like. I, I feel like I should delay it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Brap, what was your take? Are you going to buy this game or this isn't even on your radar? Uh, I'm actually downloading it right now. I have uh, EA Pro on PC, so that's part of uh, their new their new releases are part of that subscription. So so I'm going to – look, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'm going to give it a run. I've read people who have had some issues with it. I've also read some other people who have been playing on PC that haven't experienced any issues, so – um, I'm going to give it a run, see how it goes. If there's issues, then I'll just not play it and <laughs> wait for the game to be fixed. But I, I don't disagree with with Eric. It used to be like day one. Now it's like day one-ish. <laughs> day you know, one, like maybe. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't have those concerns, per se, with like Sony first, Sony first party or Nintendo first party games. But um, but yeah, I mean, the third party stuff, it, it, it happens a lot. And you know, I as much as I would like for them to, uh, to delay the games, I just think unfortunately there's a there's a element of of business to this that uh, you know, I'm sure the developers would want to uh, would want to delay it. Um, but you know, the the bean counters get involved and they're like, nope, you got to ship the game because we need to make our money back. Yeah, no, I completely so, no. That, that's a that's a good point. I think you're you know piggybacking that's, off that's of Eric's point. Part of the business, and 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 we're also our worst. Like like gamers are also kind of their like like. We, we do this to ourselves, too. We'll go out and buy, you know, games that are broken. <laughs> I mean, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, but what did Cyberpunk, like, sell, like, 13 million or something crazy, like, within the release window at full retail? Well, you know, the thing is, though, but, having but I, you know, we could sit here and point the finger at ourselves and say we're the ones that buy these games. But I, I got to defend us. We get a, a list, right? You get a list with dates of yeah. games. And Jay said this. This was one of his top five for the year that he was most anticipated. So he has every right to be like, when this game comes out in this window that we were promised, and, he, and I see Jay, Jay's one of those gamers that he's already pre-ordering games months before or when they become available in pre-order. So they give the timeline. They say when the product's coming out, is, it, it, don't get me wrong, the old buyer beware comes into play here, but I, I honestly point the finger back and I say, and I wonder if it's even the developers. You know, you have to wonder if it's maybe the publishers. You don't know what's going on. Why do they have to make these dates? I don't understand that's it's beyond my pay level here 
you know, doing, you know. But nonetheless, I do want to do you, this. You I, mean like the release dates? The release dates. Yeah, because that's they, they usually have a window uh, where they want to release the game to recoup, you know, their their money basically right away. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes there's some flexibility, but yeah, that's just my understanding. But yeah, but like it's it, also I, I don't, like the quarters too. Like they try to make certain yeah. goals in the certain quarters or whatnot to to it please to uh, investors or whatnot. So yeah, it was like, oh, exactly. a Star Wars game. We're going to release this because we know May Fourth is coming around, and we're going to drop this new thing in Disney Plus. This is going to, you know. Um, you know, incentivize people to check it out on Disney Plus and or get the game or whatnot. So we want to have a product there. Um, but I just feel like, yo, you have a great game here, but you know going into this game, your 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 performance frame rate wise, you know, resolution wise, whatever it is, it it, it wasn't up to snuff. But it's still gonna yeah. release it anyway. I got a question about this game. Go ahead, Jack. Uh I was halfway listening my bad. I was watching the draft Tyson did something stupid. But um <laughs> So, to my understanding, the first game, right, the first game, it, it got uh, critiqued heavily based on the issues with the game performance-wise, but it seemed like this game, they kind of ignored that and it scored way better on Metacritic, you know what I mean? So, I'm trying to figure out what a disconnect is with that. Yeah, because the first game on PS4, like, it had a lot of issues, but what people were saying back then... Oh, it's a PS4. You know, the CPU is weak and this and that. What's the issues now? What's the excuse? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, you, you eliminated PS4 or the Xbox One version. Am I right? Or is it coming out later? I'm not too sure, but I don't see PS4 version of this game. So, yeah, but know, Jack, Jack brings now? up, yeah, but Jack brings something up that's it's, it's even deeper than that. And Jack, tell me if I'm uh, misrepresenting you here. But he's saying this was a problem in the first game. Here's the same issues in the second game, maybe worse, maybe, depending on the gamer or the system you're playing on the platform, pardon me. How do, how do these games get these? It's almost like if you're a media darling game, you're just scored better. Because mm -hmm. like this, Jack, right? I mean, in all honesty, what you're you saying that, is yeah. with the issues we've been seeing all day and then people that reviewed it talking about the issues all day. This is like, you know, a, it, why didn't it get dinged for that? Is this a 75? Is it a 78? It's a, last I checked, I haven't checked it today, but it was like sitting around an 86, which is, let's be honest, an 86 is a damn good score. You know, that doesn't tell me the game's broken or has issues or glitches no. out or shuts down the system or crashes your not, system. Jack, may, Jack is making sense too, uh, because not to bring up this game, but you know, I got to do it, but days gone. A lot of people didn't, really enjoy that game because of the performance issues with the that's game. right you know what i mean as far as reviews and they got dinged for that you know it, this game is not really getting dinged for the uh for performance you know what i mean it's not even on it's pc not. pfi whatever it is not but do the i, I guess i wonder like if because you know what if it's a situation where do, do the performance issues outweigh the rest of what the game maybe does right right is it are the performance issues like really game breaking to the point where it's like like, oh, I, no. can't, I can't play this game. I will say this much. Or, or, is, or, or is there enough there to be like, yeah, you know, it does have some issues, but I got to say it was fun. It was a good game. I enjoyed my experience. Great story. Great combat. You know, it, dep it I, depends I, on I, the I gamer. Know. It depends because I there's going to yeah. be gamers that's going to boot this game up. The first impression, they're going to be like, oh, and they turn it off and they're going to go to another game. Me, yeah. I, you know, I yeah. like to just go through it and then fight through it or whatnot, but I don't really think it's, like, super, super bad, but it's just disappointing performance-wise. Like, I expected more. Yeah, no, and I, I hear yeah. you guys. I got a couple super chats. Especially, here. especially given the pedigree of the developer, uh, Respawn. So. Well, that's it. That's the, that's the thing. So everyone loves Respawn, right? They, they seem, seemingly do no no harm, no foul, nothing. I mean, although I, I don't remember what Titanfall 2. How did Titanfall 2 score? Do you guys remember that? And Brad, maybe you could look that up while I'm... If you like don't mind, eighty-seven or eighty-eight, something like that. That did. I mean, that that scored well too. But that game actually played well. That didn't have any issues. You know, Respawn seems to be a, a a darling in the business. Everyone likes. Everyone's like Vince. Everyone's like chomping at the bit to get Vince to come work Titan, for them. Titan, or, Titanfall Two is an eighty-two Metacritic. Oh, eighty-two. Eighty-nine. Still, I'm sorry. Eight, eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. 89. Well, eighty-nine is very good, by the way. Very good. Um, shout out to the great Jimmy Harrison. He says, "Best damn podcast." Jack, move. Good to see you, bro. Jimmy, great to have you here. Great to have Jack with us too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Danelle Brown says, hmm, so I guess you have Jay Barry acting like an Xbox dude today. We'll see. I don't know about that, Danelle. I, I, that's, you know, Jay can do a lot of things. I don't know if that's one of his talents. We'll find out. He said, he said I was acting like an Xbox dude. No, he's, he, dude, Danelle says things just to get people riled up. <laughs> oh, oh, saying, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, Rob Jones was, says. He was 
going to call us on Brap the other day. <laughs> yeah, for he not did. having uh, J Dub and a, a Porter Rock on. <laughs> Porter it. Rock, yeah. Shout out to Rob Jones. He says, "Here's to another five months, Mooch. Great show, Rob. Thank you so much." Danell's back. He says, and "He, you know, he he just jabs me left and right. I love Danell." He says, "The New York Giants and Mets suck. Raiders all day." Uh, we'll talk about that later, Danell. Off uh, off uh, off air sports. Uh, Raji's back. He says, "Conversation should also include how journalists obfus." Fuscated. I'm sorry, I'm reading that probably wrong. On the performance, I have the, the print so small on this third monitor. Performance of this game and gave it a nine. But games like Days Gone got a six. So basically what he's saying is, can we trust the reviewers? Which, Raji, that's a question uh, for the ages we just kind of talked about. Raji comes back, he says, the EA engines are not in great state from FIFA to Madden. Jedi Survivor uses Unreal Engine 5, so UE5 is not a solution. First party is important. And Navy Vet, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Guys, please do hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think when it comes down to it, that, that seems to be a, a glaring issue with it. Now, Brap, where did you, did you buy it on uh, PlayStation or Xbox? Or are you buying it on PC? No, I, uh, you're talking about Jedi Survivor? Yeah. You said you're downloading it now. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm downloading it on PC. Yeah, because I have, like I mentioned, I have a EA, EA subscription service on PC, which is like EA uh, Pro, I think it's called. Yes, it is. And so, like, yeah, so when you subscribe to that, you get, like, all the new EA releases. So, yeah, so I'm downloading it right now. So I get it for quote-unquote free. Oh, you got EA Game Pass? He's got EA Game yeah, EA, Pass. Exactly, yeah, EA Game Pass, yeah. Listen, <laughs> y'all Yo. think the Game Pass effect ain't real. Another game launching the service, so look what happened. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, Yo, Jay, but, great, great was, point, though, Jay. <laughs> right? We'll fix it later. Don't worry about it. You're only paying uh, whatever it is Brap's paying a year for EA Game Pass. I don't know. I and look know. when it's when it's when you feel like it's free. I mean, you probably are more willing to to, to tolerate certain things, you know. Yeah, well, they're trying to change that. the mindset. They're trying to change the mindset. Like, yo, we don't have to give a a proper running or a great product day one. Yeah, that that seems to be the sentiment, oh, man. man. Over, Mooch, over. Can over I just again. tell you something? Please. That bo- that boss battle right there with uh, listen. Um, I don't even with care. Aloy, it, it I looks loved, like God of War and God of War Three and, and, and Kratos. Well, I'm glad I put my game playing here because Jay was talking about how impressive it is, guys. I, listen, like is, I said, but I've been speaking. Are you seriously? But like, I've been trying is, to speak the truth, insane. though. I've been trying to speak the truth, though, Brad, because a lot of people written me and they say, "Hey, Mooch, you know, should I buy the yeah. Burning Shores?" Listen, it's very clear. I'm not going to sit here and fan out. I'm going to tell you real. If you didn't like Forbidden West, don't buy this. Don't buy it. Like I'm I, and Jay, you might tell me like I'm full of shit, but like I got to tell you. I tell people, if you like, I like Forbidden West. I got the platinum. I like this. I, and then this is a visual stunner. It's, but but you can't, you can't say I hated Forbidden West and you're going to love Burning Shores. You know I what t- I mean? I tell you, it's, it's, one, it's, a, it's, it's a direct a, uh, continuation. Right. That's, all, and that's yeah, my advice to yeah. people. I think it's as clean and as clear as it possibly can be. But I'll tell you right now, the game is drop-dead gorgeous. It really looks it's good. One of the best next current gen games i've ever seen it's it's insane like just the yeah no the yeah, they improved a lot too like destruction yeah. and and everything is oh, like the improved particle there. effects the light i mean you guys are seeing it on particle screen this is all happening in real time it's it's just it, it is it's a marvel for the eye um but you know what? i gotta we gotta get to the meat and potatoes i know we're getting close to eight o'clock and i know we're gonna end up having bad bit here soon and nick's gonna be joining us in the near future as well as uh, the great david faulkner is gonna be with us uh, this is very exciting. So, Jack, I got to go to you here. Jack, I was told. Jack, I've been told for a year by doctors, lawyers, engineers, and every other specialty in the game of life that this was a done deal, Jack. This was a done deal. Stop talking about it. Just let it go through. And we're going to move on. And I know every, every podcast is so tired of talking about the Activision deal. But, Jack, I got to ask you two questions. What do you think, what were your first impressions when you saw the CMA blocked it? And secondly, where, is, where should Xbox go from here if the deal ends up not getting the EU and the FTC's blessing? Oh, so when I first saw that it got blocked up, Hey, I ain't gonna lie, I was very shocked because, you know, they have had their troubles in the past trying to get this deal to go through. Yes. But I thought that was like a little hurdle, you know what I mean? They was gonna get it done. Um, I was legit shocked. Um, apparently they still got some other stuff they can... It ain't, it ain't totally, you know, done, but it's looking bad for them right now. Right. 
Uh, I was surprised. This is gonna be is this is gonna be a bad look for them, man. Especially PR wise, optically, this is this is horrible, right? You can't come out and say you acquired Activision Blizzard to make us a Call of Duty, wow, you know, Candy Crush, all this, and then you know a year later be like, we were just kidding, you know, we were just kidding, bro. Like you can't do that, right? So it's gonna look bad if it don't go through. Um, what what are they gonna do? I can see them still, you know. But that's still like what sixty nine seventy billion that they're not spending on this. They still got that in the tuck, right? That's right. I can see them going after other big third party developers. Um, you know, and there's some out there to be acquired. You know, uh, maybe a Ubisoft or or a Capcom. What you know? Are they are they looking to be acquired? Or EA? You know, so I can see them getting real active in the uh the purchasing market again. The problem mm-hmm. is they're probably gonna face similar issues, right? Yeah. So if this didn't go through. And I think they gotta pay like three billion if this don't end up going through. That's right. Well, uh, before yeah, before a certain time, they gotta pay three billion. Uh, Bobby Kotick still gonna be in charge over there. It's it's just, it's just a bad overall situation, man. I I don't know, man. It's well, you know, and it, Jack, the way you said it though, and that that was the first thing that comes to mind. But we're thinking in the same when you see the the teams that's uh, majority of the teams because there's some teams like we're gonna talk a little bit later about with Firewalk uh, that they that PlayStation picked up is they, they, they're they looking to get more into maybe some multiplayer games. But with Microsoft, they really wanted this ABK deal because they wanted, like you said, they wanted that Candy Crush money in the mobile market. They wanted to really dominate and have, again, Call of Duty has a mobile game. They wanted to also dominate the number one game on all platforms right now. You know, whether you're talking about PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, I mean, Call of Duty, that 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 that's in the top 10 every single month, if not the top three usually. I think it dipped down the last month. But it'll it'll rebound back up again. It's just that type of game. So when you when you think about what Microsoft really needed to get ABK for, if that deal doesn't go through, I'm telling you. And I know Phil Spencer came out and did a, an interview or a show, another one, where he says basically, you know, we or he, I guess he briefed. It wasn't a show. Pardon me. He actually briefed his folks and he said that we have a plan in place if the ABK deal doesn't go through. Which I I believe him, but I don't think he had a plan B. I think this is like Plan D. You know, it's like, I don't think they had something ready to rock and roll here. They really were banking on this because if they get an Ubisoft, and by the way, you guys can all chime in on this. If they get an Ubisoft or they go get a, they, they're not going to be able to grab a Capcom. Everyone's like, oh, they're going to grab, Cap-. they're not going to grab, but Ubisoft or EA. Yeah, that might help them in the console space, but does Ubisoft and does, does EA, does that help them in the mobile market? Does that help them in the subscription base? I don't know. I, I don't necessarily Listen, think Microsoft so. Microsoft don't need to buy shit. They already they they got twenty three they got twenty three studios. <laughs> what the fuck are you gonna be buying? What 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 is buying EA gonna do? You know what I mean? You're not even managing these studios, right? This is the problem that we have in here. Phil Spencer coming out with his with his BS talking about we got things in plan. Okay, let us know when is when is when is Fable coming out? Why is this community or this specific platform of community uh, members so f- hyper focused on? what Microsoft is acquiring and they're forgetting about the whole 2020 show that they, they showed you uh, yeah. uh, with, with, with all these 20 games that ain't even come out yet. You know what I mean? Like, yo, they yeah. got you to forget about the things that they promised about this console, like ray tracing, RDNA 2, velocity architecture, ain't none of their games using them shits. They got y'all forgetting all about that joint. So y'all worrying about Activision and Blizzard deal. Microsoft, we don't, we don't need Microsoft buying no Activision or Blizzard. Because they're not going to improve on any of them motherfucking studios anyway. These people don't care about these games. All they want is their they want access to these games at a at a very cheap cost. That's all. That's all that the gamers is, is 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 looking out for when it comes to this shit. They don't care about if Call of Duty is going to improve. They don't care about Crash Bandicoot making a new Crash Bandicoot and all this shit. They don't care about none of this bullshit. All they want to do is pay play Call of Duty for a dollar or whatever game for a dollar yeah. or fifteen ten dollars. Yeah. Microsoft is not improving shit. Pat these dudes up. The CMA, shout out to y'all. Shout out to Jim Cop Ryan for, for, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever he got to do over there in the UK to shut this shit down. And they did what they did. It's over. Pack it up and go to somewhere else. Focus on the goddamn studios that you got right now. How about you make a, a fucking Series X version of Ghostwire Tokyo? How about you try to make a better version of the PS5 version? Something that you own now. Focus did- on that. How does that even happen? No, no. You know, go on that ramp, Barry. You know, that's one of the other topics I have, but I'll just bring it up. This is right from, I believe, Digital Foundry. Tokyo, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo is quantifiably better on PS5, according to Digital Foundry. I mean, that game was, okay, the deal was originally set for PlayStation 5, but there was a year in between there before the release. 
to get everything, every bell and whistle perfect for the Xbox launch. And, and, it, and it still didn't happen. It just goes to show you, and I've been saying this for a long time on the show, and I got to keep saying it every week. I really, because there's a lot of people here in, in the chat. By the way, I respect everybody in the chat. There's a lot of Xbox fans here tonight. Like, you guys have an Xbox, right? You, you should care about the games that are coming on your, this whole time. Where's Matt Booty? Where are the people watching over this stuff? Where's Pete Hines? Aren't they watching these games? Are they looking at these games? Is the Arcane developer and, and president, where are they looking at these? If I knew I had a deliverable out, that deliverable has to really shine, especially since it's already been released on the competing, the competing platform at this point. And it still doesn't shine when it comes Ooh, out. You, you know the difference between people that actually care about the games and people that don't? Take, take PlayStation, for instance, right? Mm. PlayStation can announce, oh, we're, do, we, we're acquiring Firewalk for multiplayer and all this shit. What, what, what are we saying in, in, in the comments? Or what are we saying at feedback? Where is factions? Right. Where's you my factions? You can all too. that bullshit yes. you want to do. Where is the game that we want to play? Right. You know what I mean? You promised that shit two years ago. Where is the goddamn game? We ain't seen not one lick of it. We're That's not right. the difference with the Xbox community. They could get all these promises. Halo Infinite supposed to be getting all this shit. They ain't even get there yet. They they all they all forgot about all that shit that Microsoft promised them, and they hyper focused on locking this this acquisition down for games that they don't give a fuck about either. You know what I mean? It's just well, the I, weirdest I, thing in the world. I bring it up every week I because I, I'm more of a Gears fan than a Halo fan. Where's Ge like Gears? Nobody even talks about Gears. This is a this is a pillar of their franchises, right? And it, no one the multiplayer's dead. Halo's multiplayer's dead. And that's why when people were saying to me weeks ago, before any of this decision making was going on, maybe months ago, well, Mooch, it's just gonna be better. Activision will be in better hands with Xbox. And I'm like, well, can you just show me some proof? Because I'm seeing two games that I played the hell out of in multiplayer spaces that I don't touch and nobody's on anymore. And you're telling me now let's give them another big game and see what they, how, they, how they handle it? I'm just not seeing it. And like you said, that's the call out. I'm not, it's just, this isn't a blue versus green thing. This is you guys at home, myself. You have an Xbox. You have a PlayStation sitting there. And, and Jay, you're right. I'll give shit where shit's due, right? I've been waiting forever for factions to come out. I don't think anybody's been, and shout out to BG, BG's, I think once a week he does his, this is my weekly, where the fuck's my factions at? It don't Tweet. matter what they announce. Well, he's you know, right. Like, where, where's this multiplayer? Where is it? You know, and it's simple. like, you know, you got to give shit where, where, where it belongs. I mean, shout out real quick to John, John, the Don. I appreciate that. John, John, I was talking to him over on over leveled podcast. Great to have him as a member of the, uh, the, the uh, channel and subscribing. Uh, Glintzer says, uh, Microsoft got the Matumbos. No, 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 no. Finger waved. Ouch. So they got blocked. Slane Chilean's here. I appreciate that, Slane. He says, Xbox should go back to releasing backwards compatible games or remake Gears of War games like they remade Resident Evil 4. I'd have no problem with that, too. But I mean, you know, Slane Chilean, here we are many years into this generation. I would like to see some new IP from Microsoft. I'd like to see some new things come out. And then not come out broken or fixed six to 12 Ooh. months later. Go ahead, E. Ooh, the whole, if you, if you just watch, the problem, the problem is, is this, and I'm not, you know, going to try to ride on the Xbox family. Because the no. minute you start doing it, they go into the pony thing. And I'm like, what is somebody, what are you calling somebody a pony have to do with the facts that are laid out in front of you, right? It doesn't change what it really is. And the problem is, and I keep saying this, Microsoft, they want to, they're the master, well, the jack of all trades, the master of none. Yeah. They want to be everywhere, but they have no culture, no mind share, no excitement around anything. And they have no idea how to produce that. You, you know, you watch, and I'm, I'm going to say this, you look at Nintendo where they, you know, they have Zelda coming out and you look at how they present that and how they push it. And they're going to make sure that when it drops, it's on point. That's why they'll continue to delay it and everything like that. Right. But then you look at the advertising, you look at how they push that. There's a culture that's built around that, that builds excitement. Right. You know, you look at what Sony does, they build, they have a culture around it. They put a huge ax in the middle of um, the, the square in Denmark. You know, to have a culture, to have an excitement. They should, you know, when they when they had God of War twenty eighteen, they flashed the whole game at halftime on the basketball court, right? They have subways with Spider Man on it. It's like building a culture. And I look at you know things like you know, look at like a high fire rush. It's like okay, that's a shadow drop. Why didn't you have a team ready to go to have that everywhere? They don't even have like merchandise in the store for that. For that, mm. you have this really cool concept that really speaks to a certain culture of gamer. You have nothing to go along with it. You should have had a street team ready to go. You should have had giveaways ready to go. You should have had yeah. just cramming it down people's throats. But you don't, 
it's too much of you know taking it for granted and as a given. Well, what's been all the dough? And it's a given because our hardcore base they're going to carry the the the, the EJ, water. EJ, Eric, that costs money. Microsoft mm-hmm. is trying to do the least possible, but they want to remain relevant. So they're not going right. to market but, for these games. Jay, they're not going to do any of that. But what? But Jay, but what, what does the base always tell you? Oh man, Sony's broke. You know, Microsoft has the juggernaut pocket until oh, yeah, something facts. doesn't go Microsoft's way, and then what do they say? Well, look at Sony, they keep, to, they keep trying to lock, you know, Xbox out of it. How the fuck can you lock anybody out when you're the richest company around? Yeah. You can't, how does the broke company bully the rich company? Yeah. Microsoft yeah everything everything Microsoft is doing. Do certain deals. Everything right? Microsoft is, ex- 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 you just said it right there. My bad, I'll shut up. You said it no, right no, no, there, no, perfect. No, jump in there, brother. Stop acquiescing to everything that these dudes throw at you. And that's what the, Remember, Jay, 2013, games, games, games. They're coming with the games, the games, games, games. It was the best lineup in Xbox history. You know, look at the games. And then when that dried up, it was like, now we're going to go to Play Anywhere. Yeah, Play Anywhere is the jive. That's what it is. That's what it is. And it came Game Pass. Oh, yeah, Game Pass. And you wonder why games are skipping your platform. You wonder why all these things are going on. It's because you decided Game Pass is more important than actual games. Yeah. Happened yeah. for Game Pass. You got, you know, you got your, your influencers out there. Game Pass is the future of gaming. No, say it right. It's the future of Microsoft gaming. You know, it's like stop acquiescing to everything that these dudes want to do and hold them accountable for stuff. And stop saying we do hold them accountable. Remember when live, they tried to raise the price on it two years ago. They walked that back. Remember we pushed two years ago. They pushed that back, but you haven't pushed them back on anything else. Yeah. And like you said, Jay, they want, they want all the success. They want the culture, but they don't put anything to it. Well, they said they're going to get these studios and let them just kind of, you know, let them rock. Okay, so, you know, I run a halfway house, but I don't check in on any of my kids. And I wonder why the house burned down. You know, that's not how you build culture. It's not. You know, it's funny. We've been saying these things for a long time. Shout out to X Abbott. I'll read this one real quick. This is funny. Xbox fans complain. He goes, you guys just focus on Twitter bots. He goes, well, Mooch does the same thing every week. While we're waiting for new games, can we get new talking points, Mooch? X Abbott, we're sitting here trying to tell. I've been saying for a very long time. Xbox needs new leadership, okay? Game Pass may not be the savior that everyone has been preaching to you. And if you're tired of hearing those talking points, how come these changes haven't been made? How come you don't see anything happening different, yet you're still standing there by the console of choice that you've picked, which that's your right, and and you don't Mm -hmm. see the problems that are happening here. Everything for the past year and change, Jay Bari said it, Eric just said it, that we've literally, they're literally, the Xbox camp is just backing up this act. The Activision deal meant everything. They took your mind off of the fact that the show you saw in 2020, most of those games are not out. And then the show we saw last year, the Xbox Bethesda showcase. You will play hey, these games that. in 12 they're, months. They're acting right now like all of it is falling apart for me because of the Activision deal. And if you bring that up, what do, what do dudes say to you? Well, Activision approached them. Okay, well, if Activision approached them, there should still be a plan in place. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the cherry on top of the plan that you already have. But why are you acting like there's no other plan in place? None of that Activision deal should have had anything to do with what you've been showing on the other studios that you've acquired. Right. The Activision deal should have happened or not happened. And at the same time, simultaneously, running parallel to that, should have been game releases after game release after game right. release. Not, no, Moosh, not, not a, this is what you're going to be playing for the next 12 months. And most of it is not even yours. Mm. <laughs> and then most of it didn't even, like, wasn't even really the deal. But it didn't come out. Right. You know, I mean, the only game that's meeting, I think, right now is, is Redfall. Redfall is, is it's squeaking through before June, right? It's coming out May, uh, May 2nd. But it's not even done. All right, can I? Can Go I ahead, Brad, please. Like, a couple things, X Habit. If you feel like Mooch Crossfire that does this weekly, you don't have to listen. There's other shows. If you're looking for more uplifting, I guess, Xbox-centric shows, you can probably find uh, a show with the letter X in it, and it'll probably... Give you your fix. Um, it ain't also, even gonna give me the fix. Of all they talk about is PlayStation here. shit uh, on them Xbox. Yeah. Man, fact, shut up, Moose. My bad. It's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, it's all right, Jay. And then, and then he says, to, you know, I'm about to go in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, so oh, now, we're, we're, not going there because they're not doing you any favors. They're telling you what you want to hear because that lines their pocket. Exactly. Mm. So and then and then X Abbott says, so now we're worried about merch. I thought it was about games. Uh, X, that, that's oh, not. God, that's not come an on, man. It's culture. That's a, keep, yeah, that's keep, that mindset, keep that mindset and wonder why it doesn't go anywhere because there's a culture to gaming. It's like hip hop. 
Those, yeah. There are those companies that know how to do it, and there are those who obviously don't, and they treat it like a services thing, like the rest of their product. Yeah, and I they think, wonder why it's not flying. And I, I think too, like you know, like Exxon, that's 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 actually a misrepresentation. Like what Eric's saying, he's talking about the culture of gaming. That's one aspect. That's one piece of gaming, and. And I don't know how long you've been on X, Xbox, X Habit, but uh, I go back 20 something years and I was an Xbox Live beta tester. Get out of here, Brad. No now. way. Yeah, we're, good, we're good in there, Rick. We're good. We're good. But, but look, I mean, like <laughs> the stuff that Eric's talking about, they used to do. Mm -hmm. They used to do Man, those things. Listen, X Abbott, boo hoo. <sighs> the deal got blocked. Move on. Let me, let me ask y'all a question, right? <laughs> no, go ahead, Jack. I, you know, I stopped, you know, I used to be like, you know, I used to be very critical of Xbox 2, man. Uh, not necessarily from a, a positive standpoint. You know, I was on my console war shit. Y'all know how mm. I go. But um, I, I slowly started to realize, and I don't know if this is like copium from them, but Xbox fans truly love and appreciate, you know, Phil Spencer, Satya Nadal, yep. uh, Sarah. They love these people, right? Like, they, 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 they put them on this pedestal. They can't be touched. So it's like... Do we really even need to talk about because they're not gonna change, right? No, like true no. quote unquote true diehard X, they love this shit. They yep. they love the games they're getting, whether they get, you know, a 50 on Metacritic, they love it. They yep. can't get enough of it, right? So it's like that's why I even stopped, you know, I stopped all the arguing back and forth. Oh, absolutely. They not gonna change, man. They 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 fucking with what they're getting right now. I'm I, I'm happy for them personally. No, Jack, that's a great point. And like I say, shout out to shout out to the teacher who's here in the chat. He's, you know, he was going back and forth with me. And I said, well, teacher, I said, what, what is it you're playing? He says, well, I'm, I'm playing Halo multiplayer. Now, listen, first of all, I say good for him. If he's enjoying that game, I'm not Absolutely. here to take, I am not here to take his enjoyment away. No way. All I'm saying, I'm not speaking to anyone's single uh, particular enjoyment of a game or not. I'm saying, here it is. I would have liked to have gotten into Halo. They made a big thing about it. That would be something that I would have liked to have jumped it's the same maps. They really haven't added much. Like they're adding like shoulder pads to the, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing really big coming from, from Halo's just kind of stagnant. Now, if you like that, that's fine. But Jack, you're kind of right. Xbox is going from loving the games to loving the staff. You know, they, they love the staff, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so it, it is Yo, what it they, is. They, and I'm not disputing that. Fans. They, they're more Microsoft fans now. They speak more of Microsoft. And I think that's what it is. That are, might be what it is, too. Yo, and that's what it is, bro. They, they, they're they not no Xbox. Look, listen to most of them. They're not talking about Xbox. They, what is they talking about? They're talking about Microsoft acquisitions. It's not an Xbox acquisition with the whole uh, um, Activision. This is a Microsoft acquisition. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's just crazy. They, they, they definitely turn. But I, I do agree with you. Those Twitter that. lawyers, though, out of nowhere. You know, it's people yeah, that can't even comprehend like two hundred and forty character tweets. All of a sudden, they know how acquisitions work, and I'm like, yo, yeah. this is crazy. I couldn't. I couldn't On the do. daily grind, posting <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy, man. I'm amazed by how many people became legal experts overnight. That was truly That's what I'm amazing. Like, yeah, like, I need to take that course in, uh, you know, in, in, in legalese and and become an expert in merchant acquisitions because. Like overnight, it was like everyone was an expert all of a sudden. It was amazing. Yo, shout Shit, out. I can't even read. You have never read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Yo, guarantee, I guarantee out. you that I have not read the legislation. Shout out to the great David Faulkner's joining us and Faulty. the great Mr. Bad Bit is here as well. Look at this. This is fantastic. Oh, I told you, oh. I promised you guys some, uh, some uh, great oh, panel tonight. We got it here. Uh, great to have you both joining us. And you're kind of coming right at the meat and potatoes. We did talk a little bit about Jedi, which we can go back to later on. If you guys have some insight on it, but you know, Mr. Babbitt, I got to ask you, yeah. you know, last time you were on the show, we were having some great discussions. Uh, you came in at the end uh, of the last show and yeah. we were just kind of, we were just skimming where we were that time with the ABK deal. And listen, we're yeah. just talking about it real quick. I mean, I got to get your opinion on it. Two things. And it's the same thing I asked Jack. I got to ask you, what was yeah. your initial gut feeling when you read the headline? I actually had to check and make sure that it was real and it wasn't a fake tweet, first of all. But, Mr. Man, I want to make sure. What was your gut feeling when you woke up, saw that? And then secondly, where does, in your opinion, where does Xbox's next strategic move go from here if, in fact, the FTC and the EU don't allow it to go through? So, that great question, Mooch, because honest to goodness, I was ready on Wednesday to talk about where does PlayStation go from here now that the acquisition is looking like it's going to go through right like i was literally like i i had my show notes just planned out for wednesday then all of a sudden i i saw this headline i was just like oh oh you're like wait oh <laughs> that's well, not things got incredibly interesting so it's not going to be as easy as what everybody said 
You know, it's not going to be the the cakewalk that we all assumed because people told us it's going to go through easy peasy, lemon squeezy, all that crap. So to me, um, I was very surprised because, yeah, for the longest time, we we all were saying, hey, you know what? This thing, chances are it's going to go through. You know, Xbox has more money than 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 God and more lawyers in them as well. <laughs> so, like, you know, I, I always came to the to the thought of like, just for the bank account alone. They're going to push this to make sure it goes through. And now, all of a sudden, it is not that easy anymore. Um, in fact, it's it's looking, it is almost looking like a John Wick, Wick type, you know, impossible task to do at this point. Yeah. Again, people outside this field walk it into it because I'm no merger acquisition expert. I'm no FTC expert. I'm no CMA expert. I don't know how, no. you know, other than than the UK being a parliamentary system, I don't know anything to do with with Jack when it comes from from that. So to me, I I I looked up what the experts were saying and they were as surprised as as I were, but wow, this looks like it's much more of a it's, it's much more of an undertaking than anyone was kind of giving it credit to be yes. now where does xbox go from here um they seem like they're gonna still try to push this thing through yep. so maybe there is something in the fine you know the fine wording that they can try to find a work away around the cma and the ftc right because before yep. this we we had a feeling that they would take the ftc to court and win all that jazz uh, but now it looks like you got to take on two uh, large entities at once yeah so it's not as easy as one as assumes so it, it seems like xbox is is taking the path of most resistance they're going yes. to fight this thing activision's going to say what activision needs to say in order to either a get this thing through or b get their three billion dollars uh from from cost from this deal but honestly if this thing still goes through it still goes through and xbox is then going to take a look at this playbook, see where they went right, see where they went wrong, and continue their acquisition spree. Do you right? think, no, so do you think, Mr. Babbitt, and this is one of the things that we were we were kind of alluding to. Jay made a good yeah. point. Jay Barry says, you know, Mooch, I don't know why you're asking that question. They've got 24, 25 story, studios. They just make games and concentrate on games. Do we start to see, if this deal doesn't go through, that maybe we see layers or tiers of Game Pass We've we've seen certain articles written on this. They're all just rumor. There's nothing here that has any weight to it by no means. But where they said, basically, I'm making this up. $20 a month, you get the Game Pass, the ultimate, when it goes up, whatever, this and that. But then they'll have a cheaper tiers where you'll get the AAA games six months down the line. You know what I mean? Or, you know, all those big games. And then that way they kind of keep Game Pass relevant, but... They step off of it a little bit. You know what I mean? Because they've thrown everything in the Game Pass. And when you don't have, <laughs> how do I put it? If you don't have publishers that can continue to feed the beast, yep. well, customers eventually are going to say, I don't want to subscribe to this. I mean, and, and, that's the, and that's the difficult thing that Microsoft has. That's why they've gone along this playbook of like, yeah, buying developers is nice, but then paying for their overhead and then trying to build original IP uh, is and and get that to connect with folks is incredibly hard. That's why they're going with you know these publishers where it's like people know what Call of Duty is, people know what World of Warcraft is, people are entrenched in those communities, and so that's why they're 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 making these these deals with these publishers because it's also bringing IP with them. So like if this deal goes through, they're going to keep doing that. They want to keep feeding the beast. They want to have yeah. a cycle where every four months there is a major Game Pass game that you're playing, right? In theory absolutely but if this if this doesn't go through you're right man they got what is it like yeah 30 plus studios at this point you know they have also incredible studios like ninja theory yeah. and obsidian that have multiple teams within those 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 studios so to me it's it's not like xbox is in, is in a terrible decision because they have really talented studios what i'd like to see them do uh, is more of the PlayStation route. There's some really awesome developers still out there that can, you know, do for some for some uh, influx of cash, some safety, all that jazz that they could go ahead and pick up. 
you know, I would love to see them have, and they have a working relationship with, you know, studios like Remedy and go pick them up. They're yes. working on a million things. I bet they would love some type of security to make sure that those things keep running smoothly. So to me, that's what I would like to see them do. Whatever happens with Game Pass happens with Game Pass to me. Um, you know, as much as I'm not a, a, a consumer of Game Pass, I'm going to be playing Redfall on day one. I'll be checking yeah. Starfield out. And I think that's the main thing is, you know, what's going to be important and I think what's going to be the crux of Game Pass, whether it, it really, I, I think the, the important obstacle that it truly needs to overcome is making sure Starfield's a hit. Um, I think that Has would be, be the more of the canary in the coal mine. If they can't make fetch happen, which is Starfield, then they really do have, I th I think, a problem on the on the IP front. But you know, Xbox, I feel for it, man. This has been a month of L's, and it just feels like it, it keeps piling on. So it's been listen. a whole generation of L's. This this, this we got. <laughs> listen, <laughs> it's been rough. Yo, it's been rough. right from the rip of this console. It's been it's been rough, man. Like. I get that they have talented studios in there because I'm not going to, you know, just go all fanboy and say that they don't have no talent over there. They do. I, but they don't have no talented management. You know what I mean? You can't get a game out for nothing, man. And here's yeah, the thing. Launching you can't argue that, that when, issue. when, when yeah, even on, their flagship franchise, Halo, it, we're, exactly. we're talking about its relevance. And it's like that game came out the first month. Everybody was like, oh, my God, this game is legitimately great. And then what's happened after that? mismanagement you know changing of the pipeline changing about how just the games monetize you look at that marketplace you're like how did how did any of this get approved that's microsoft's the biggest achilles heel jay is like they got great studios like amazing yeah, studios yeah, yeah. you know you know you know what's mind-boggling to me but, like yeah. a game like forza horizon 5 which by metrics is doing great you know reviewed well people are playing it but they, they can't find how to keep that game relevant as far as keeping people within that community playing. You know what I mean? Like, the games that, like, I don't, I don't really, I, I listen to a lot of, you know, the podcasts, I listen to a lot of people talk. They're not talking about no Forza Horizon 5 no more, even though that was something that was the talk of the town when the game came out. Yeah. But now, a year later or whatnot, it's no talk. A game like Gran Turismo out, they didn't re even review that well uh, as, like, a Forza Horizon 5. But that game is still irrelevant. You know what I mean? Like, yo, there's cars coming out every goddamn uh, uh, month, in, 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 you know what I mean, with the game. VR mode, where people's just constant new conversations coming out, where, like, okay, you're doing a live service game, you're treating it like a live service, constantly updates. The, the games that Microsoft even do well, they can't even keep it relevant. Mm. That, that's how you know it's something problematic over there. It's crazy. Yes. Like, yo, Force is doing well. It did great. People's talking about it. People's loving it. Why is nobody playing this game now a year later? Yeah. They'll talk crazy. about, oh, 11 million people played this game, but where are they now? Like, how, how are you keeping them still engaged? And it, it has everything to do with, yeah, management pipelines. That's why one of the things that I think Microsoft, the, the other reason why they want to pick up publishers and not developers is less oversight on their part. You know, they just let Bethesda do their thing. And all they all Bethesda really has to do is just focus on two platforms, PC and Xbox, right? Yep. And I bet that's the same thing they want to do when it comes to Activision. It's like, hey, Activision, you just keep doing your things. Just make these games exclusive to the, you know, Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, and that's what that's why it's it's so important to them, because, yeah, to, I mean, every every time there's like a bump in the road, uh at, at xbox land it's like there's a call for people to, like to resign people need like we need management change and then nothing happens we kind of forget everything and it's like the cycle continues Ooh, here's a cool trailer of something that looks promising and then it's like death by a thousand cuts and then the thing comes out and you're disappointed let down or it doesn't live up to expectations it's like this constant cycle of where i feel like a lot of us i know i i do i want xbox to do better I want Xbox to be consistent. One hundred percent, and they're not. It's like, dude, get up, let's start fighting. Like, you, like this Activision Blizzard thing had me excited, excited because for the first time they're gonna have a slew of IP that are just phenomenal, and it's gonna make me go, oh, maybe you know what? I need an Xbox to play Halo, or sorry, a Diablo. You know, maybe I do need you know uh, uh, an Xbox to go play Warcraft, like stuff like that, and. 
I, I don't know, man. It, it, it seems like Xbox, once the wind's behind the sails, yeah. something just happens, and they just lose all forward momentum. It's Yeah, Joe, it that's sucks. what we were saying before you, before you came on. It's like they, they want the accolade, they want the culture, they want it, but they don't really seem to know how to build it, and they think spending is the only way to do it. And like you said, it's almost like they want a machine. They want to get these pubs. They just kind of take care of themselves. That is not, that's not how it works. Well, because the, you know? the the problem there is I feel like with the X, the original Xbox, the 360 era, they didn't have to rely on exclusives to really push those consoles out, right? Like they had such a superb online ecosystem at the time that like you wanted to play a multiplayer game, it was Xbox. But then all of a sudden, you know, audience started to change. You know, games became a bit more diverse in terms of genre and what people wanted in the single player arena. And all of a sudden, Microsoft took a look at their catalog and go, oh shit, we only have Gears, Forza, and Halo. And when you take a look at the pantheon of both like Nintendo and, and, and PlayStation, it's like you have a slew of history. And that's what Xbox and, and Microsoft desperately needs. They need history. They need back catalog. And then all of a sudden in, in you know 2016, they realize, oh, this is what we need. So how do we, how do we fill, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years of, of IP history? Well, let's go out there and buy a Bethesda. And right now let's go out there and try to buy an Activision Blizzard. That's how we'll build that IP because we neglected it for decades. And we're, we're, we're seeing them fight for it, man. They desperately seemingly really want this thing. It's important to them. Mm-hmm. yeah no i and those are good points you know a lot of people there's a couple of people in the chat that, i don't think anybody here uh sarah again he says mooch you criticize people for becoming regulation experts and your panel becomes experts on how to manage they're not experts they're gamers and they're telling you what I'm they just want looking they're, at they're, it. they're telling they're <laughs> telling you what they want to play on the devices that they own and what they're not yeah, getting it's it's basic consumerism it's like you're not speaking to me you're like you're not doing anything. It's, it's simple. That's not managed. That's not sitting here being a management expert. It's just simple. I have money to spend. I'm a consumer, and you have none of my mind share. It's like, hey, listen, because I'm a Halo you, yeah. fan. I've been a Halo fan since right. I picked up the original, you know, Combat Evolved on 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 the original Xbox, and I seen firsthand. Oh wow, that game has struggled to make content. And listen, it, to an extent, that person that's that's talking is right. It's very easy for me to go out there and say, hey, that you need to do better at X, Y, Z, and E, right? To get my attention back. It, it, it's very easy for me to say that. They've also had years to do it. So like me as a Halo fan for the past year plus, I've been looking for content and I don't know where that mm-hmm. content is. Mm-hmm. I got a few maps. We're finally starting to see something, you know, start rolling in through the pipeline. Um, I, it, and it's been a year plus. Yeah. So yeah, no, I mean, and no, you were, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people no don't means, know. No, a lot of no, people don't. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about management for a minute. Cause it seems like, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, you know, there's a history with Xbox where a lot of us come from. Right. And a lot of the passion comes from the fact that we remember the days of when it was just like diverse and they were kind of hungry and going for the thing. So there's a lot of dudes like to kind of call back to the good old days and nostalgia and they want this and that. So let's talk about the management days of the Peter Moores and, you know, and, and the Seamus Blackleys and the Jay Allards and this and that. Those guys seem to understand a culture of how to build around that. Yeah. And they had mind share. Like you go through like the, the OG Xbox and middle way through the 360, you know, generation. They were everywhere. They were in TV shows. They were in the movies. And people can sit there and say, well, we talk, we're talking about games. We're talking about TV's movies. It's mind share. That's where Sony finds themselves. That's where the Switch finds itself with Nintendo. They're in the conversation outside of Twitter. Mm. You know? Yeah. Well, a lot of people realize, That's Eric, you said the reality something. Of it. Eric, you said something too. A lot of people that are on this panel, big Xbox fans, big Xbox fans. That's the thing. The problem is, is that right. you're not hearing the eco chamber. A lot of you guys come in and you're like, how come I don't hear all the, the positivity? It's not that it's not positive. Guys, we've been sitting here well, with first, these consoles. First and foremost, Moosh, I want to correct you. I am not a big Xbox fan. I'll play their games. I need you to, <laughs> Jay I need you to calm that one down. And Jay, you know what? If, if Moosh, Jay if say, to the guys who say that to us, the guy, when Microsoft starts to act excited and take it serious, I'll do the same thing. Right. Right. What's wrong Which, with that? I'm it, taking it as a given. Yeah. Right. Wrong. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm not going to come in here and say, I, I, I mean, I said before, I was like, you know, Hi-Fi Rush is an amazing game. And there's a, there was something that they could have built around that. Yeah. 
didn't do it. And then what, what we got accused of, oh, now you're talking about merchandise. It's supposed to be about games. It's the whole thing. It, it's it's All the that fact that like, to excitement. yeah, the, you know, the, the, the criticisms that I have is like, take a look at what uh, PlayStation's portfolio is doing. Take a look at what Nintendo's portfolio is doing right now. It seems like game after game is a constant hit, both critically and commercially. And now when you take a look at the Xbox portfolio, you can see that they got some swings, some misses, some swings, some hits, and it's inconsistent. At so best. one needs it, you know, so one could just draw the conclusion as to where that may be. I personally think it's something to do with that. The 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 pipeline over there at Microsoft is a miss. Yeah. Um and listen, it's a concern. And again, very easy for me to say all those things because I don't have to go ahead and do it because I'm not smart enough to. So as much criticism as I could lay a, a person like what, uh, like Matt Booty or, or whatnot, I would hate to be in that man's shoes because I'm nowhere near as bright. <laughs> I could just say, you need to change this, this, and that. And that, that's that's the best I can, well, I I'm can sure offer. It, no, I'm no, really, Bradley. really, really and truly, I feel like people should listen to people like us, our uh, perspective, because there's a reason why you're down 30% in a quarter. <laughs> when it comes to hardware it's because yeah there's there's multiple people that think this way about xbox change the goddamn culture the, the platform you gotta have you gotta have better management get your games out there and people will g give people a reason to buy your goddamn console there's a reason these numbers is coming out and they're not so uh, uh appealing to look at where they gotta lump it in with 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 windows stuff <laughs> you know what i mean to make the junk look good it's a reason for all of it. It's, it's not slander. It's not fanboy stuff. It's just like, yo, I'm looking at this console. I'm looking at this platform from the outside in. And this is what I feel like they need to do to improve for me to invest into the platform. That's how it is. Mm. That, that, that's all it comes down to. It's like, understand the relationship you have with this thing. They make a product. You have money to spend. That's the relationship. It's not... But you gotta stop this baby bird mentality because oh they, they listen to us they talk to us on Twitter I don't don't talk to me go make games right I don't need you to talk to me that's I don't right. need to be your friend I don't need you, I don't need to jump in the party with you yeah. that's cool that's good, but there's too much focus on that. Yeah, and, yeah, it's, 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 and that's the same just, thing, you know, Jack, Jack, I got to guess, Jack, Jack, you know, the one thing, Jack, we bring up all the time on this show is, and you, you talk about it a lot on Twitter is sports, right? I know you're a big sports fan, but like, yes, think sir. about it. What, what you're hearing from Eric, what you're hearing from Babbitt, what you're hearing from Jay Bari, we should have as gamers the same mindset as we do for our, 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 fan, our fanatics that we have with, with sports, right? Jack, the minute Tennessee does something, and you said it just before, you're like, oh, you're like, sorry, Mooch, I was just checking out our draft pick, and you're like, Tennessee did something stupid. Like, the Giants have made, the Giants years back, I remember having my friends over at the house, this is a long time ago. We had, like, the, the second pick, they picked up a, a damn kicker. Like, we almost broke the television, we like, right? So my point being, right, Jack, what I'm saying to you is, how come there's this leniency on that side to, to say, oh, you know, leave, leave Phil and the, and the gang alone, this and that. When we don't like our coach after three years, that guy got to go. You know, yeah, so like, why is it different in game? And this goes for Sony too. If if all of a sudden, forget the crying Jim Ryan. If Jim was not selling PS5, you didn't have any games coming out at all for a full year. I, that guy's got to go. It's not about Phil. It's about doing your job, right? And I mean, I don't understand how gaming. I always try to make that relation between gaming and, and sports, Jack. I mean, what, do you see what we're saying here? Where where is this allegiance now? It should be about the games, not about the staff. Absolutely. Uh, I feel the exact same way. You know, he, and going back to sports, your team could win, right? Your team could win on a Sunday, and you still got, you yeah. still point out, all right, you know, it's a little sloppy on the special teams. You can clean that up, right? Right. Even, right. Like, I'm, a play, I'm a PlayStation guy. Uh, even when I do like a PlayStation game, I still have my critiques about it. You know what I mean? They could have did this better. They could have done yep. that better. So I definitely see what y'all are saying, but at the same time, like, I just don't know, man. This new age of fan, even on the PlayStation side too, Jay Barr can attest to this. This new age of Twitter gamer, people that start gaming after like 2015, they're a different breed, man. They don't, they, they they don't really have are, like, bro. they don't have standards, right? right? They don't, <laughs> whatever you get them, they good with it. You know, thank hey, you. Can I have some more? Work. They don't, they don't have problems with nothing, man. It's weird. The enemy is anybody being critical. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's the enemy. It's never, it's never, it's never the fault of the company. Ever the fault of the company. It's always you, you the asshole, because you're talking bad about it. And oh, am I gonna come to your podcast? It's gonna be doom and gloom. I'm not. I'm not gonna. If I feel upset about something, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna rub your shoulders. Like this is money. 
And, but they they, make it, they've, I to me, seen. people focus on positivity. And I, you listen, I love everybody to be positive. It, it's a great way of thinking, right? Like glass half right. full, all that type of stuff. But to me, it's about thoughtful criticism. We, if I'm getting shit because I think Jim Ryan cares more about his cats than his employees, that's how I think. That's how I feel, right? right. Yeah. Uh, right. But right. at the end of the day, Listen, I got to give credit where the where credit is due. Yeah, guys doing doing gangbusters for for his uh, his product so far. So it's like, yeah, no, I I don't think. Listen, I don't think you know Jim Ryan touches a game pad unless there's a photo in front of him. He's not putting on those <laughs> right. those pulse. But I'm okay with that. In a, Bad in a bit meeting of some sort. I'm but okay with me, that. Let him I'm do okay his with job. Just, I don't care. I think, and I think that's the thing that gets filled the pads. People are like, well, he's a gamer. He understands. It. I'm like, at the end, yeah, he, he, he's a gamer. But at the end of the day, he's, a, he's an, uh, an executive as well who has self-preservation, who damn sure likes his salary and likes being in the position that he's in. Mm. So he's going to say the things that you need to hear or he thinks you need to hear. And, and stop this thing, too, where, like, look, Mooch, look at the example of when Jeff grew up when I talked about, you know, what he thought he heard about Hi-Fi Rush, right? And it kind of turned to this whole thing. Right. And people were going back and forth in the whole nine. Yes. No one really knows what's going on with that except for people who are in within the company and maybe a few, you know, writers, whatever the case may be. So Jeff went out there and said it. It is what it is. And people were going back and forth and pushing back. And what happened? The minute Aaron came out and said, no, that's not true. See, thank you, Aaron. We appreciate it. What is yeah. Aaron, what's Aaron going to say? No, Jeff Grubb's 100% right. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we under, yeah, we under, we undersold, we underdelivered. He's not gonna come out and say that, <laughs> right? You know, that's why I said so leave Jeff. Like, you'll immediately believe, you no, know, Aaron, but you, but Jeff is completely wrong. But you don't really, maybe, you know, and Jeff, kind of, I don't know if he kind of walked it back. I can't remember that, but it's sort of that thing where, at the end of the day, again, like, who cares? I no, thought High Rush was an awesome game. I thought it deserved kind of better than where it was because it was hyped for a moment and then it fell off. I mean, I think everyone, everyone, you know, people don't want to say it, but everyone was like, oh, I love how they dropped it. If the game was as good as it was, and it's a good game, we've all said that a million times, right? It's the same, that's where I came up with it, like, great, right? Because if you say Hi-Fi Rush and you don't say it's great, you get yelled at. So it's like, it's legitimately, right. it is a great game, but at the same time, they shouldn't have even, they shouldn't have stealth dropped it. They should have advertised it. And people were like, oh no, they would have bashed it. I don't think they would have bashed it. I think the game would have done even better. It could have maybe pushed Game Pass a little bit. Oh, I got to get Game Pass. These are the type of games we're going to get? Oh, shit. I'm, well, I'm signing up. Even, it even so, it's like, who cares if it gets bashed on Twitter? Like, who cares? Because right. it's right. Twitter. No one really gives a shit. Twi like, yes. show exactly. it to people that people... I think the reason why people were so excited about Hi-Fi Rush was, oh, my God, this looks different. This looks really cool. Yep. And guess what? Nobody spoiled the secret. Up until this point, it, it gave us the old vibes of old E3 where we didn't have all these insiders leaking every which thing right in front of us so that we knew what was going to be or what it was at least a quote unquote expected from said showcase. Right. right. So like that's why people were so excited by it. It's like this is something fresh, something new. And oh, my God, I didn't hear about it until I saw this this thing right here right now. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Like. They, you know, I see a lot of Xbox folks going, this game's amazing. This game is a game of the year contender, all that jazz. Where's the promotion behind this? Like, right. it, it shouldn't just be, hey, here's this one, this one feed. Go have fun with it. No, it should be, hey, months on after the fact, you know, what do we have? You know, put it on your social media, put it on an advert, you know, put it on a TV commercial. That's, that's what they need to do. It's just, it's frustrating to see it. It's frust really frustrating. You know, and it's it. funny you say that. So, so this is the thing. I got I to piggyback off of what Bad Bit's saying real quick. They just came from a year where they dropped nothing, right? So I yeah. legitimately, why not advertise it? You stealth drop something when you've got hit after hit after hit, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to sprinkle a little of this on you. Cost you didn't money, see Mooch. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it costs money. So, man. you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, but you got all the money. Shout out to the great Jeff Grubb who's here. Jeff, you know, I always, I do. People, you know, Jeff. By the way, I defend Jeff Grubb snacks. I defend him. That's my go, man, oh, Grubb, bro. man. That's my guy. I was on another podcast. They were like, "Well, you know, Moose just defends Jeff Grubb." I said, "Jeff's very clear that he says this is what I heard. That's yeah. all he said. Right. Right. That's what I heard." Yeah, if, if PlayStation don't have a showcase, then 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 Grubb, I'm on your ass. But uh, other than that, that's my guy. <laughs> He's, well, don't double down also, on that, Jeff. Also, <laughs> no. Grubb, all I want to know is, you know, Bloodborne Two. Where's it at? You know, where, how far along is it? We want, yeah. we want the deets. That's all I've ever cared about. 
Yeah, that's what we need to do. Two two plus years, we've been hearing all the uh, the inside on that's coming. It's on the way. Hurts me. It I know. Me every Bad time. Bit, he waits for that. Us, he still they waits. Uh, I got some super <laughs> chats here. I want to go over. Uh, shout out to the King Thrashers here. He came just in time because True Witty's got here. He says, uh, "Hello, FTC." He says, "We need the deal. Let us compete." <laughs> shout out to True Witty. Shout out to uh, uh, Sick TV, Sick Humor Man. That is probably one of the beats that will go down as memorable through this entire generation, probably even the past two generations. That is an unbelievable beat. So shout out to the round table and shout out to sick dude. That is crazy, crazy good. Wicked talented. Jean Jean the Don, he says, first time here, salute to Mooch panel in the chat. Microsoft worrying about the ABK deal is like they're picking out a new flag to wave while the mast of the ship is broken. Fix your ship and respect gamers. Shout out to Jean Jean. Uh, Jimmy Harrison, the great Jimmy yeah. Harrison to everybody else. He says, no, no, please, Bari and Mooch, keep preaching, bros. That was when we were going back and forth. I'm a little behind here. Cherry Boy 77 says, Steve Jobs said it best. Microsoft has no spirit. No enlightenment oh. to them. Dude. You know, listen, I'm an Apple, well, I'm an Apple Steve fan. Steve so. Jobs now? <laughs> hey, leave Steve alone, will you, man? Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez, that was you rough. That quote, but I remember that quote. We miss you, Steve. Uh, shout out to Raji. He's back. He says, uh, Microsoft, uh, don't think of original ideas, and they don't bring much culture into their products. They are like McDonald's. Another Steve Jobs quote. Wow, Steve, the great Ooh. Steve Jobs living. Nah, all, yo, Microsoft just needed a drive they had for uh, 360. 360, it was, that was, com- that was com- competing. You know what I mean? E- even if it wasn't bar. buying or acquiring no nothing, they was getting a lot of these third-party deals and having gamers incentivizing buying into their platform. Motherfuckers was... was was having Red Ring of Death, and they still bought two more. You know what I mean? They That's how good it was. was the the games were there. there. That was me. Yeah. 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 I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm putting pennies in my machine. This is better. You know? Yeah. It was, yeah. They was competing for your dollar. This this whole this whole game, I'm not saying Game Pass is bad. I think it has its place within the, 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 the industry, but the reliance on it changed the culture of how that, 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 that platform of gamers think. They're not. They're not there to buy support games. They're not there to buy the console even in itself. You know what I mean? It's just like I don't know what. The, I don't know well, what. The fuck, the bar is interesting. You say hey. that because. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to add and say Microsoft just needs to leave Xbox alone to be a gaming publisher and platform holder, and stop trying to force this hybrid business to business model that they use in their their more successful areas to stop trying to force that into a business to consumer point gamers have a very different desire than what another business does that's the mm-hmm. biggest problem yeah yeah the, mm-hmm. the game and you know and david i i'm glad you chimed in i do have a question set aside for you specifically uh i was just going to come to you right after these last two super chats here uh Raji's back he says in an industry based on ideas microsoft will fail yeah, well, easy Raji. i mean listen microsoft's gonna be fine first of all and, and, and xbox yeah, isn't yeah. going anywhere I mean, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. The question that people say at the end of the day is, will down the road, this could be five years, could be 10 years from now, could be 15 years from now, would they, because look, at they have Bethesda, they have their studios. Like the, the worst case scenario, would they would be third party. And let me tell you something, they'd be extremely successful as a third party, in my opinion. Uh, Psycho Gamer says, besides Bari, is anyone actually happy the deal is blocked? So Bari... <laughs> He he apparently knows your answer. Mm-hmm. I I, I want to just say Yo, this I'm, much. I'm ha- I'm happy because yes, I don't trust Microsoft with the the franchise of Call of Duty. You're not going to improve that franchise. Well, see, you, you, Call of Duty is in the shitter right now. Yeah, I'm not going to be like, oh, Microsoft is going to improve it. You just took the who, words. Who say that. You just took the words out of my mouth, Jay. That's what what I was going to say was I'm not happy. It's not about being happy. Like like I went out and made a you know I bought a cake. Okay, the thing about it was this. I see where Halo is. I see where my beloved Gears went. Okay? Mm-hmm. I see where's Fable been? You know, outside of Forza, there hasn't been anything that's been consistently put out good from their big pillars. The things from the 360 era that we came through to today and say, well, look, they got that. No, they didn't. Everything's been kind of Ouch. just kind of ruined. And I'm sc- I like, as you can see, I'm playing. I play Call of Duty. I like this game. I don't want to go. F- I don't want it to go from bad to worse. That's my Mooch, concern. If you, ask, if you ask Psycho Gamer right now, like what, what he gets out of this deal or is he happy about it? Of course he's going to say he's happy because at the end of the day, he's going to get cheap access to games that he's not interested in. He don't give a fuck about no Call of Duty. He don't give a fuck about none of the Activision games. That's all these dudes is excited for. It's like, oh, I get cheap access to these big blockbuster games that my Activision mm. will come out with. 
I have no interest in it. I've seen somebody say, yo, they are super excited for Diablo 4. So I said, are you going to pay for it? He said, hell no, he ain't buying that. He waiting for the acquisition to come through so he can get it for a dollar. Yeah. This is his most excited game, too. Yeah. And I'm like, what the? What is going on? <laughs> You're like, what is happening? It goes back to what Jack said with the new, this new generation. It's interesting, man. It really, really is interesting. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, no LD. And, and, and list wars. Oh, the list wars never end. I'm not, I can't. Maybe, yeah. I should have had Jay read this one. Noel de Jesus, he says, shout out to the goats, Jay Bari and Jack. He says, $40 in Jay Bari's voice. I tried to do it, Jay. I can't do it. Yeah, $40. <laughs> $40. <laughs> I can't even. I try. Uh, so I got to ask you. So, David, great to have you here as well and joining us. So a couple things here. So you live in Australia. Some people know that. Some people don't know that. Uh, David's having lunch right now while we're all probably about to have a uh, one of our favorite adult beverages as we enjoy the evening. But David, one of the things that came to, kind of came up was what's the take you're, you're hearing here from like the Microsoft executives have started to kind of come out and, and they've been a bit nasty. Uh, not the executive, pardon me, uh, the lawyers like Brad Smith and them. A little bit nasty on some of the tours they're doing right now, almost like threatening we're not going to do business in Britain and this and that. So my question to you is this. When it comes down to, and it's opinion-based, but when people say, oh, well, don't worry about it. Microsoft's going to give these 10-year deals, and they're, they're playing kumbaya, and they're going to give all the games in the world they want out. Don't worry about it. They're not trying to take anything away from you guys. Look at what happens when you go against them. All of a sudden, they're like, well, we're not going to do business. We're not going to do the same kind of business we've been doing in Britain. We're not going to be doing that kind of business there anymore. This is what happens when Microsoft takes Bethesda. Microsoft takes ABK. They said they weren't done even with ABK. They might have went out and tried to grab an EA. Once all these games fall underneath an umbrella, Microsoft, after these phony 10-year deals would go, they can do whatever they want with this IP. What kind of, what are you hearing more from outside of the States on, on this uh, Microsoft, like the, the, the president and some of these guys coming out and doing these tours? And they're, 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 not, they're not as nice as they were, you know, before, uh, what was it, Wednesday's announcement. They seem to coming out now. Now they're coming out guns blazing. Well, the, the main sentiment that, that I'm picking up on a lot of it is, aside from the, the shock that um, a lot of professionals actually in, in some high areas are, are looking at it going, did they really just say that? The, the follow-up comment is, who the fuck do they think they are? Mm. Um, I'll be honest, it's big American companies don't get a lot of positive viewing outside of the US, um, and then when they carry on like they have, you know, what's this is bullshit, threatening withhold development and, and pulling out of, you know, security contracts and all that sort of stuff in the UK. That's paramount to, to causing a national security issue. There's been wars started over shit like that. So uh, they're not going to do it. They're not going to give up billions of dollars worth of revenue for Microsoft just because they didn't get what they wanted with this deal. It's, it's you know, they're, they're having a massive tantrum and thumping their chest and making it look as if they've been hard done by for the sake that, and the wording that they're using is quite interesting, might I add, for the sake that if they don't decide to go through with the appeal or they lose the appeal, they can just turn around, say, face, point at the regulators and say, well, we tried and they said no, and then quietly go about their business of honouring the contracts that they've got. Mm. Like, yeah, they're, they're grandstanding to a, it's, I'll use the best analogy I can give. It's like a, the heel in a professional wrestling bout, um, you know, like the WWE or something carrying on having a tantrum because he lost and then just quietly going on about screwing someone else out of it. So it's, um, the, the wording is quite, it's quite shocking that they would be so strong, but then it also shows a lack of understanding to a degree of how a lot of these other, um, regulatory bodies work and mm -hmm. how independent and like fiercely independent they are of, of the political system. Yeah. The, there's some interesting stuff, and again, I'll put my hand up. This is how much of a nerd I am. I read the whole full report. There's some there's some interesting gear in that. 420 pages for anyone who's interested. Um, there's some interesting stuff in that, but the the 10 page summary picked up most of it. It's they looked at the very specific things. They found that the evidence provided to them was was indicating certain stuff. They looked through a lot of the the guff and the bullshit and came up with a with what was really going to happen the um yep. the breakdown of the 10-year deals is quite interesting um 
yeah, in, you know, we should how get, they were. David, can you get position? into that? Can so, you get into that a little bit? Because I think the audience needs to know that these ten-year deals weren't as sweet as originally advertised. Right. So um, a couple of people have, have, have put some posts out on Twitter, but the nuts and bolts of it is that the ten-year deal was basically they're offering it to everyone, and and Nintendo was was similar. Uh, um, they weren't singled out as a, as a separate thing, but it was. It's basically you bought the game and you, it was a BYO, bring your own game streaming access point like NVIDIA GeForce or some of the others uh, that exist. So you still had to buy your game up front and then pay additional access subscription fee on top of that. So for someone like myself in Australia with COD, I would have had to pay, say I paid full price for it, um, so I pay 129 Australian dollars. It's about 79 American or whatever it is. Um, $129 Australian to buy the game, and that's on PC. And then I've got to pay another $25 a month to be able to play it through NVIDIA GeForce. Um, and so how is that cheaper than just going and buying it directly on a console or mm. directly on the, on the um, system? Hey David, I, so I, I that, signed a 10-year deal with Microsoft. Uh, I'm just announcing that here on this podcast <laughs> exclusively. What's up, PlayStation? Uh, Sign a 10 year deal. Get, get yeah. that money, brother. Get I, that money. I appreciate you breaking that here and not tomorrow morning. I uh... get that money. <laughs> Anything for you, Moose? No, but... <laughs> I appreciate that, Jay. Um, sorry. The uh, yeah. So the the cost of it is is quite incredible. Um, it's restricted to Microsoft. Windows operating systems only. They've done deal. They, they're not doing deals with Linux or um, Android or any of the others. Um, they were basically uh, picking and choosing who they wanted to do because mm-hmm. they weren't going to do it with Luna and they weren't doing it with anyone else. So they were exercising an element of control, which was, you know, it, depending on which side of the coin you're sitting on, was yeah. was not looking very competitive, particularly because Microsoft was not engaging in any positive manner. So, like, the, the deal that they were trying to put forth for PlayStation was they were expecting PlayStation to pay for Call of Duty, whereas currently PlayStation doesn't pay for Call of Duty. Um, they take a, an element of percentage of revenue out of it. So when, you know, when the argument is that there was a change in dynamic there that made it unfavourable, well... This, to the nuts and bolts of this particular deal, that you know the details in these ten-year deals, They're like they had another one signed up last night yeah. after the announcement, it's exactly the same as what the CMA found was not not valid. So, um, and the outcomes of that was there was no way of policing it and making sure it would actually work, and hence such they said, well these things are just rubbish they're, they're not going close to satisfying what we expect so well when it even um, went a step further because uh didn't this one of the cma findings and i'm paraphrasing here but then they also find that you know the fact that they were saying that nintendo switch wouldn't be able to handle the the actual games so th- the whole thing is kind of just fud right at the same time it's just not it's not these these 10 year they just got uh also blocked also, on- also it came out and said that uh for, shout out to charlie intel as far as the original uh proposal that got exposed because yeah. it, it, as far as when it came to like uh the the DLC and all the microtransaction and all that stuff, Microsoft keeps a hundred percent profit off of that. Yeah, PlayStation was yep. like, nah, oh, we ain't wow. doing that. Yeah, yep. so that and that was the other thing too because Microsoft owned it and it was basically the subscription fee that you would pay to Nvidia or whoever else it was, including PlayStation and Nintendo. The idea was that you were paying to have access on your device to access a game that you already bought from Microsoft, and all they would do was host it in their cloud server and then run it through an emulator if, if need be. Um, the Nintendo one, their hardware can't run any of the current Call of Duties except for maybe the mobile versions. And then they're free to play anyway. Why, why would you be paying... <laughs> You know, if, if Activision really wanted to put that on Nintendo, they could. But then that's part of the other argument that they came up with. Is yeah. Activision could do this, but they've chosen not to because they're trying to preserve and maximise the value for their content as much as possible. How does it benefit consumers on the other side? Because CMA looked at it as uh, one side was businesses and the other side was consumers. 
how does this business inter in interaction or this business transaction actually benefit consumers in the short, medium, and long term? And if you say Activision could do it now, the same as what they would do it after the merger, mm -hmm. why don't they do it now? Well, because they're trying to preserve value for themselves. Does it give value out to the end user? And if you've got to buy the game regardless, well, there's no difference. So there's not actually a benefit in allowing that transaction to occur for this merger because they're currently not, they're choosing not to do it, but they have the ability to do it. If it, go, if it went through, basically the CMA said, if it went through, then the control passes to Microsoft and Microsoft would leverage their own technology and shut out other players, so other operating systems and, and competing platforms. Yeah. Well, I got to be honest. I'm so glad David read those 420 pages. Uh, yeah, right. I'm, fucking, I'm, like, I'm like over like, here, wow. like, <laughs> Listen, trying I... to make a spark note to that. <laughs> Holy shit, David. Good job. Dude, honest to God. So I, I... this is my second podcast this week with David. He's uh, he's really, really wise in this. This is his forte. This is his, his livelihood. So it's great to have. David, thank you for that insight onto that. I know that there's also a little bit more that, about the Sony's earnings. Remember, in remember all the stuff that Jim Ryan came out? Everybody's making fun of him yep. and saying all this stuff. Yo, it seemed like he was right with everything that he was saying. <laughs> a lot of it. You know, the details is coming out and they're getting exposed out here. They, 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 the, 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 the contract Remember? is inadequate. Remember when he said yes. that? This yes. Yes. Inadequate. Yep. Yeah, it because is. it is. So look, I'll, um, I'll, I'll go on the record as saying, I've, yeah, it's the stuff that I do day in, day out. I read this stuff. I'm a nerd. I like following up on it. Um, but that's the businessy side of things. As a gamer, Man, I just wish they'd make some fucking games for Xbox. Come on. <laughs> That's what I'm, we're all saying. That. that seems to be the sentiment here tonight is just don't worry about all that. Focus on the 24. To, how many studios do they have right now? I was reading, and I thought I saw 24, but then Bad Bit had mentioned yeah. upwards of 30. Are they at the 30 mark? Right? Am I, am I not? Or is that with Activision? I uh, that's I, what I, I don't know count. because the numbers of bad bit for the I last year like 23 24 I thought it was 24 yeah, it's like 23, right 23 now. 24 but then okay. when, you, when you break down like uh, the Bethesda teams and stuff like that I think it pushes it up to like ah, almost there you 30 go. in that effect yeah, yeah. Yep. So we'll talk. Oh, I'm, I'm hyped for Redfall I can't wait to play well, that at 30 bad FPS. bit my see, eyes bad, can't tell the yo, difference yo, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about like like I'm an arcane stand like I love arcane yeah. I even like death loop right so I'm looking forward to this game but I'm like but they don't seem excited by it because I feel like they completely threw Arcane under the bus when the 30 frame per second debacle kind of happened. All the execs that love the talk had nothing to say. Man, I would love to oh, see you know? some, some, some true advertising for that game. Like, real talk. Well, yeah. wait, it's so being launched in between Star Wars and Zelda, and I have not heard anything but about the 30 FPS stuff and, and 60 frames is on the box, that type of stuff. <clears throat> I, I'd love to see it, you know? Well, let me. I've, I've got a. I, sorry, I've got a question on that. Pentiment got no marketing. Yeah. Hi-Fi Rush got stealth dropped. Yep. Yep. Redfall is 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 ducking and weaving to try and avoid being slapped with the 30 FPS issue. Starfield's supposed to be coming out shortly, and any time they even go close to talking about it, it gets delayed. Do they even have a marketing division at Xbox anymore? Other, if they didn't get Bethesda. What would they have done in the last three years? Uh, and, and, and it harks back to what I said. If the management is the issue, then get rid of the management. It's, it's insane yeah, to think that their two biggest games for the year <clears throat> have had no marketing as yet. Yep. Uh, wh what the fuck is that? Yeah. It's, it's aggravating to see because so uh, I forget where I, I heard this from, but uh, something about, you know, their marketing doesn't or, or or their marketing budget has been slashed and that could be probably due to you know the the recent uh you know slew of layoffs over at microsoft entirely but like that's the thing like you're paying x amount for all these publishers well we'd like to right. see these games be promoted you know yeah but then and that, and that no that microsoft, microsoft the markets like they market like uh they they marketing for like a podcast like you know when you about to do your podcast well, like hey guys on Twitter yeah you know Crosswire coming live uh seven p.m. Jay Eastern Barry. time they, it's, Jay, that's like, what, yo, they, you listen gotta, you got to market be, beyond end that of, if you want people to end of appeal last, to your game end of last generation into this one uh, what's his name Aaron Greenberg came out on Twitter and said well, they're going the grassroots route that's what that's what they're doing and that's what grassroots is it's just they, they, feed they, it out it. and then let influencers and let the media and let everyone just run with it. They don't have to pay the hundreds of millions. Like, 
Come on, you see what Sony does when games come out, right? They got trains, they got planes, they got everything. You watch, flying a, you watch all a, over a sports the place. event, like a big like finals or whatever it is, whatever a sport. You see a PlayStation commercial running through that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You go watch a movie. You see PlayStation Productions and whatever game that they're marketing uh, in the movie. Microsoft's like, going the grassroots route. Now I'm not going to say that worked or not, but I, I don't I don't personally think it's doing very well. And there's a now and, and Mr. Babbitt made a great point to go right into Redfall because I do have a question about Redfall. But I do want to ask David, you have a question in the audience here. Uh, Sarah again comes back. He says, Mooch, ask him why he thinks all the all these companies are signing the deals. So he's referring to the NVIDIAs and the Nintendos. Why do you think those folks did sign these basically imaginary pieces of paper? What's the downside? If the deal does go through, they'll have games supplied to them that they don't have to pay for, but they can make money off selling the subscription for the access. They're yeah. basically mm-hmm. selling access to something they don't have to buy. So what's the downside to it? If the deal doesn't go through, they're no worse off. Man, if you put one of them in front of me, I'd fucking sign it in a heartbeat. Why not? Because in the off chance that it does go through, I can then offer something that I don't have to pay for. It's money on the upside. There's no downside cost. Absolutely. It's all, it's just, it's all win. So there's your answer, Sergeant. I mean, really, that makes sense. He's given them a document that basically says, but although I will ask the question, David, I'll play devil's advocate here. Those contracts were going to take a bit of the, the bread out of their mouths, wasn't it, though? Well, maybe, depending on how you structured it with where you sold it. But, I mean, if Xbox is going to have 100% of the game purchased and then 100% of all the subscriptions and all the rest of that sort of stuff, then all the purchasing is being done on their storefront. All I have to do is is sell you, you know, like NVIDIA GeForce down here, 25 bucks a month to access shit that you already bought, and I don't have to pay for anything other than providing the, the, the front access, which I'm doing through a backdoor deal with Microsoft anyway. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like <clears throat> Microsoft has this thing with their business products where they don't engage directly with business customers they get a, a third-party intermediary to do it. But they tell the intermediary how much to, that they can sell stuff for, what the set structures need to be, what the setups need to be, and how to go about si- getting the deal signed up and what can work with what. And they give them a commission kickback on for doing that. So the third party makes money off the sale by charging a fee to the customer, and then they make money off the back end because they're selling an exclusive Microsoft product. Microsoft's making that much money hand over fist they don't mind giving up a couple of percent here and there like it's a genius way of doing it but it's certainly not going to satisfy any competition issues no because all it, it's it might as well just say Microsoft Nvidia GeForce bang there you go because <laughs> that's how all thing works it's exactly but they I'd be locked into using a Microsoft product I can't say I'm going to offer it to you using a Linux operating system running from AWS hardware. That wouldn't work. I have to do it through a Microsoft product, which mm-hmm. means that Microsoft's making more money off me. Yeah. No, that's great. And I, I appreciate the answer. And Sarah, again, thank you for the question, but I do appreciate it. Mr. Babbitt, I got to go over to you. We're going to switch over to back Uh-oh. to gaming here. I'm not going to spend okay. the whole time on the CMA. So you said, I'm very excited very for excited. Redfall. And you know what? Again, I will never, ever talk you off that good times ledge. I'm not going to do it. But I gotta I say, did you see? Did you see the Redfall? Um, the physical copies are coming out with stickers on them yeah. that basically read, you know, this game will not because on the box it says 60 FPS. So since it's not, they've had to kind of send stickers along to the Game Stops and the brick and mortars exactly. of the world and put that on there. I mean, yeah, but remember. Everybody on this panel, and I always pay a, a tribute to everybody on the panel and everybody in the chat. In, in chat, even if you don't agree with me or the panel, I give you your flowers. You guys are hardcore gamers. You guys are here. You're listening to gaming podcasts. You guys know what's going on in the news. That's the major, Mooch, majority of people Mooch, casually These are not hardcore gamers. I'm, po- I, I'm sorry, Mooch. I can't let <laughs> you. can't? Listen. Come on, Jay. I'm listen, trying to you, give you, them their flowers. You, you, you're, going, you're, going, you're going gaming politician, yo. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, if you talk to somebody like I have my friends that play, they literally play strictly Call of Duty every year and they play NBA 2K. That's the two games they play, period. They don't know what's going on with the CMA. You know what I mean? No, I got you. No, Jay, that was a great segment. I love it. But I got to say, what's this is a situation where if let's just say you were somebody that was casual, that was kind of looking forward to an FPS on Microsoft system. You're like, oh, it's been a while. Can't wait to play something like this. This looks good. 
You go to pick it up and wham, you know, it's wham. like, it's like, it's got the skull and crossbones on it. And it's saying this game is not 60 <laughs> FPS. What is that? What does that tell you? How do you feel about, is that even the right way to go about it? Man, it goes to show this game was supposed to be 60 at launch. Of course. And something happened. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like something came along and, uh, and, and, and threw a wrench in that plan. Listen, I'll be gaming politician here for a second. Right? And I'll say <laughs> this. Barry said the gaming uh, politician. I love it. I love let's it. be clear. Uh, I love Prey. Uh, <laughs> I love Deathloop. Uh, I love Dishonored <laughs> 1 <laughs> and 2. I'm weak, uh, dog. <laughs> no, I... Arcane doesn't miss. <laughs> Arcane doesn't <laughs> miss. I, I I love Arcane and I'm gonna be there for them, even when their games don't hit for me. Um mm -hmm. so I remember playing Dishonored one on PC. Uh, I played Dishonored two on PS4, uh Deathloop on 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 of course PS5. Um and even when the games don't hit like Prey, I I give them their flowers in terms of well, this game ain't for me, but I can see where it's a hit for a lot of folks. I can see the genius in it, right? So I'm here for Arcane, first and foremost. It being 30 FPS is a bummer, not gonna lie to you. Uh, that, that, that kills my hype a bit for it. But I know that there's great talent in those studios. And from what I've seen personally, yeah, it's something that I, I, I'd wanna dive into. But, you know, if I'm a casual fan, and I'm walking into a GameStop and I see a sticker going like, this game supports 30 FPS, blah, blah, blah. I don't even probably know what that, those words mean. <laughs> like, yeah. if I'm the, like, the most casual, it means, it means very little other than Microsoft and Bethesda don't want to get sued for false advertising. Right? Yeah. So yeah. for me, yes. I, I'm right. walking in excited. But I also know, listen, there is a good chance. Yeah, why not that, just change the print of the box? Uh, oh, pro probably way too late for that. But th these boxes. You're lucky been... we got a box, Jay. Exactly. You're, yeah, you're lucky you got a box, Jay. Okay. Why can't you be happy for that? No. Um. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, my my father worked in a, in a printing press for over twenty plus years. You you print something. At, you print things out months in advance. Oh, absolutely. So like these things have been, these things have been ready to ship for a minute now. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's you know, I got to tell you something, honestly, Bitten, with, with you telling us about what your dad did, that, that's, that's very telling. So you, we all kind of knew that for, uh, you know, if you were to guess, it's the, most people would think this was going to be, of course it was designed to be 60 frames, but this has been, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a catastrophic error as far and people in the chat are probably going to go catastrophic. What do you mean? Mooch? I mean that in the sense of, uh, from a developing standpoint, it is, this is a big deal. Uh, you could say it's not a big deal. And, and Bad Bit, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm hoping after you play, you do a review. Uh, I'm going to play too. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I said this a long time ago. I was actually looking more forward to Redfall than Starfield. Um, I still am. I'm, I don't care. Yeah, so know. I'm going to play it. But... I, need, I need both of you to put a two in the chat if you're okay. Put a one if you're being threatened by somebody by saying that comment. What is going on here? What 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 is appealing about this game? Because well, like, now the it's... first trailer, I felt Jay, like it looked good at E3. The, but Jay, ever since that, it just went on the tail well, end. Like, well, ugh. Jay, when I said I when I said that a while back, that's what I was saying. And even even last year's Xbox Bethesda showcase, I thought it looked okay. Remember, it didn't show gameplay, or it was if it was, it was very very sparse. It looked good. That's what I said. I said, oh man, at the la at last June, I said this looks pretty good. And then every time we've seen it since. It's just been kind of less and less and less. I mean, like, you know, we, I'm sitting here with Game Pass, and I'm sitting here waiting to use it. So I'm sitting there saying, you know what? I got to try this thing out. But, I mean, am I going to be oh, hooked on it? Okay, Probably you. not. You know? And, I mean, you don't want to be Debbie Downer by no means. And, and Babbitt, I applaud you. If you like it, I got to hear what you're liking about it. Because, I mean, realistically, yeah. right now, it doesn't matter if we're talking about Call of Duty, Apex Legends. I don't care what we're talking about. Name any... We're not playing any FPSs right now at 30 frames. So this is uh, going to be a it's going to be a tough sell. Well, for me, uh, just going through the pedigree of, of Arcane. Yeah. So like seeing how their level design is laid out. So when you're telling me, hey, listen, I could get lost in Deathloop's world. Those mm. levels where I'm just, hey, this time I'm going to like kill one of the guys of like filling the room up with gas or this time I'm going to like kill them with like no one spotting me whatsoever. Or, this time I'm going to get someone else to take the sniper shot instead of me. Those moments in, in, in those, that level design, that level layout mm -hmm. gets me really excited because there is a ton of replayability in death loop, right? Like getting that perfect run achievement is something that gets me excited. It's like, yeah, 
you know, make sure you kill all of them with no one ever, ever even realizing that's cool. So like even playing it through, you know, Dishonored, um, playing through Prey, there are moments where I'm like the level design of Arcane is almost n unmatched. So to me, when I see like, I think uh, early um, Easy Allies had uh, some gameplay that impressed me where they're going through this open world and you're still getting the fixings that you would get in an arcane game in an arcane joint where you are getting those little like you're picking up the little audio logs getting like more story out of it you are picking your route into getting into the room without being seen that type of stuff that's what gets me excited mm. the things that don't necessarily get me excited is when i see the shooting element because that's where typically arcane isn't the strongest at where it comes to the the gunplay usually it's in the abilities like i love playing uh what's her name uh, i think it was it emily and dishonored 2 like turning into the muck monster that thing's really cool so when i see the super abilities i'm like okay i'm back on track with this but right. when i see some of the the shooting the, the gunplay yeah that's where i get a little nervous by because me typically i'm playing an arcane game because i'm trying to stealth my way mm. through and i'm trying to complete it perfectly so that's what gets me excited it's them going hey you know what we do good we're really good at level design we're gonna make a far cry game and that's what gets me hyped that's what gets me excited yeah no nope. yeah and that's that's pretty much where i'm at too like you know I'm, I'm there because it's arcane right yeah. i don't know what i'm gonna necessarily get out of it i don't know how the 30 frame per second thing is gonna play out i know i would prefer to be 60 at launch only for the fact too that it again it says that thing like yeah we can't really again can't really deliver the whole thing to you you mm. know why not right yeah so um so i'm there for the arcane part and i want to kind of see how it plays out because it is definitely something different from them i'm not going to sit here and say that it's, i'm going to be in love with it i don't know this could be that arcane game i'm like eh, this ain't the one i don't know but i'm i'm there like joe said just for the fact that it's arcane and I, as a studio i love what they do so I'm going to give nope. it a chance just out of that. And like you said, Mooch, I got Game Pass. I might as well. Well, that's the whole thing. We've been sitting here with Game Pass for a while, and now a lot of people are going to go, well, Mooch, I love playing Left 4 Dead 2 on Game Pass. Okay, great. But, like, I want a new game through Game Pass. Yes, Hi-Fi Rush, but Hi-Fi Rush is not like that that blockbuster bonanza game. I always say this. This is, this is a me. This is how I judge a game. When you know a game is something that you really want to play, you like, you're like, I'm taking a day off from work for this. You know what I mean? And you may say, well, I don't go that far, but you know what I mean by saying that. Like, Hi-Fi Rush yeah. wasn't like, I didn't see that drop, and I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get home now. You know what I mean? So that wasn't that kind of game. Redfall, I was excited for, but every time we see footage, it just gets worse and worse and worse. So I, I'm, I applaud Bad Bit. I applaud Eric. Uh, I hope you know, I might even jump in a game with you guys. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'd like to see what's up with this, because yeah. I, I, okay. I hope it's got some potential. It looks like it's got some potential. Uh, shout out to uh, Nuts on and, Chin. And Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, and, and like you just said, like Starfield isn't that game for me either. But I'm also not—I've never been a Bethesda proper fan. I've always thought their, you know, uh, software studios were more challenging. You know, machine yeah. games, arcane, you know, Tango. I always thought they were more challenging than Bethesda proper, and Bethesda proper always got the pass as having the charm. You know, the yeah. game is a total mess, but it's the Bethesda charm. <laughs> yeah, right. So and I was like, I, I don't get it. But to each their own. Like I don't. I, it doesn't. You know. But but no. The, but Starfield is not that. I'm taking the day off from war game for me either. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. See how like, that kind of plays off. You know. Yeah, I'm excited, but it's not like Diablo excited. It's not Final Fantasy like 16 excited. It's not Legend of Zelda: right. Tears of the Kingdom like excited. I'm excited for it. I'm I'm hyped for it, but I'm not like this is my excitement for it. I'm excited to play it. You know, on Tuesday. Bam. It's not like I'm excited to play it on Tuesday. No, right, it's, right, it's, right, right, right. I'm excited. <laughs> not like yeah. if Bloodborne 2 came yeah. out, though, right, Bad Bit? Yeah, no, no. Okay. If, Just... if, if I see Bloodborne 2, I might cry and throw up at the same time. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Shout but out like, to, no, I don't want to say his name it. three times. I'll turn it into Nuts on Chin says Jay Allard is rolling <laughs> in his grave with Microsoft's direction. Shout out to Chin. Uh, Andy Hart is here. He says, So what's up to oh, Activision? Man, uh, what's, so what's, what happens to Activision now? job losses so you know that's an interesting question too no. from andy go ahead no. david no activision no job losses and that garbage activision is a very stable and healthy financial company like it's it's making profits it's doing well there's there's 
the bailout was not because of their financial situation. It was to get Bobby out of the damn thing. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with it. They're not going to have layoffs and all that sort of crap. They're just threatening to. They're like, hey, listen, if you don't give us our ball, we're just going to walk away from you guys and we're not going to play. Like, th- that's what it kind of seems. So when they're <laughs> when they're threatening, like, well, the, you know, the, uh, the UK can't be reasoned with. You shouldn't invest in there. It's kind of them like you know having their little temper tantrum they're still gonna do business in there and whatever ways they could get this deal through uh even with the the uk you know hooting and hollering as it seems they're gonna get it you know they're 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 gonna try to weasel their way in it you know whatever head up for activision they want that that payout too yeah they want that golden parachute bobby knows he's unliked he doesn't care i've watched enough succession to know ceos don't care what you think about them they just want the money at the end of the day and he right. wants his golden parachute to leave. Yep. And we oh, as he, consumers are, are okay enough for, for the idea of seeing an awful person get their pay as long as it means, hey, maybe these devs get some better working conditions. Um, and that's really the, the people that lose here at the end of the day. So Bob, Bobby's one of the biggest individual shareholders in, in Activision yep. Blizzard King. So he's got a vested interest in this payout anyway. Yep. But then he'll get, a, he'll get a golden payout with more money than he knows what to do with. It's just, it's prolonged his life in that role because let's not all forget about, you know, two or three weeks before they announced this or a month or two before they announced the acquisition proper, Bobby was on the hook for some pretty horrendous shit that was likely going to see him face criminal charges. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not like Microsoft popped up with this idea after months and months and months of scouting around and looking at Microsoft and PlayStation both been knocking and asking the question and then all of a sudden Bobby got in trouble and who's got the biggest pockets to pay me out of this role that's yeah. how that's how it starts so but Activision's fine they're not in trouble Xbox is in more they, trouble than Activision I was is. just gonna say I was just, Activision's numbers were massive they did outstanding this year didn't they make they did well yeah. did they not David yeah they did fine the only issue that they have is most of their money comes from, like 80-odd percent of their entire revenue base comes from three games, Candy Crush, World of Warcraft, and COD. Now, they're not going to stop making annual releases of COD because they can't afford to, because it just makes too much money for them. They're not going to cut Sony off from having COD because that's a billion and a half dollars they just set on fire. World of Warcraft is still poking along at its rate. Overwatch yep. does okay, but it Overwatch doesn't do anywhere near as much as what World of Warcraft does. And Candy Crush is just making about half their entire revenue stream. So, yeah, they're fine. There's, they're doing there's just no fine. issues with what they're doing, provided that's, they keep releasing those games. That's another but, false. That's another false thing that just was spread over the. Oh my God! Well, they they're, they're they're so they're in so much trouble. They can't do this. And Mike, they need Microsoft to coddle them. They need Microsoft's leadership, and it's like that. They don't really need that. They don't need that. Maybe they need a better job in their in their HR department. Uh, yeah, but, that's that's the part I found funny. Move. It's like. All this talking about the deal, the deal, the deal, and it's like, and I said it the other day, like, imagine if you were that invested in actually fixing, you know, your shitty company before any of this happened. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, it's funny, like, watching people like, you know, Lulu's owning them, look at her, man, she, well, she has a vested interest in owning and saying the things that she's saying. She, yeah. You know, yeah, there's a reason yeah. she's doing it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, she has a much more reason to be invested in the same thing she's saying than you, you know, a lot of people on Twitter being an um, armchair analyst yeah. and breaking it down every oh, day. You're like, talking about Lulu? This is what we said. Yeah. Yeah, Lulu, Lulu you know, will throw a meme around, uh, you know, mocking PlayStation, but she won't do a gosh dang thing about all the awfulness within her own studios right. that she oversees and that she's tried to 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 bury and kill and kill unions and all that stuff. Exactly. She's not a great person. And all these console warriors, here's where I get on soap, Soapbox. Go, oh, look at how funny she is. She made a meme. It's like, just do a five minute Google search and you go, oh, maybe I don't want to cheer for this person yeah, as yeah. much as I'm cheering for them. Because honestly, when you take a look at what they're, they've are they they've done since their tenure there, you go, oh, it's actually not that great. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm. It's actually pretty, it's pretty much the opposite. It, it annoys me. It, 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 I'm sorry, it just, it annoys me to no end. I'll, 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 I'll stop that. <laughs> hey, bits sorry, right one other little... One other little thing that goes along with this a lot of people overlook is how executives and C-level executives and directors and that get paid in a lot of these big companies that are based in America. 
they don't get paid cash. You hear them, they get that they get this, you know, oh, he got paid six, eight, ten, twenty million dollars. It's like they might have got maybe a million, million and a half in cash. The rest of it is in share options. And if you look through the annual reports for Microsoft, you see like Satcher and those guys, they get massive amounts of share options. Yes. But they can't sell them straight away. They can't convert them straight away. They have minimum periods of time that they have to remain with the company. Otherwise, they forego these options. Typically, it's 12 months. So, you know, Lulu and Bobby and all the rest of them who gave themselves a big pat on the back and gave themselves a shitload of share options, which usually pop up as treasury stock in their reports. They are still in the window from last financial year before they can convert them and then sell them. So as this thing drags out, they, they're getting paid either way. Because if the acquisition happens right. and the options <laughs> lapse, they have to get paid out with their, their exactly. cash payout. Exactly, David. Or, or it goes on, they convert the shares, and then they can sell them and get more money. So they don't give a fuck. The longer this thing drags out, the more money they're going to make. Mm -hmm. So they'll just keep making trouble. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I'm glad, I'm glad a lot of that's coming out. That's so true. Uh, shout out to True Witty. He says... Pardon me, he says, I just want Starfield, sadly, not on PS5 at 60 with DualSense support. After mm -hmm. using it, it's hard to use another controller, but I will be playing it at 30. So, shout out to True Witty. I understand. I know what he's going for. And Carlos Crispin has got to throw a jab at Mooch. Xbox strikes out more than the Mets, and the Mets are losing again. All right, thank you so much, Carlos, for that update. I really <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, I want to do a quick speed round here. It's 9 o'clock in New York, but I, gotta, I just got to ask these guys. Not everybody has to answer these. I'll go one by one real quick. I have a bunch of topics here. Jack, I got to ask you here. This is something that I really want to know your opinion on. People keep on saying to me, it's a lot. It's, this is kind of BS that Sony has not given us a show. When back in the day, we would always get that big, high glitz and glamour show in June. And then we had the PSX and you had this and you had that. What do you think right now? Do you think PlayStation needs to show you something this May, June? Or honestly, as long as they keep providing you games, the shows were nice, but you don't really care. Look, I I have been so outspoken on this topic. I think I got excommunicated from the Sony <laughs> fan base. They don't even <laughs> like me no more, right? We haven't had a show since the end of 2021. Right. And me personally, I'm pissed off as a fan. You know, we yeah. have had games come out still, but I need to see what, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't understand how people don't want to show. When has when has gaming been been like I don't want to see what's coming up? Like everybody says, wait to E3, wait to Summer Game Fest, wait to the Game Awards, and then when Sony don't have a show, they said, well, why do you care? What, what, <laughs> what, what's the problem, motherfucker? You, right, right. you want to see like how do you not want to see what's coming? So I'm very upset about it. They damn sure gotta show us something, bro. Cause I, you know, and it's cra it's just crazy, bro. How the, uh, the the way people talk about them not doing shows like it's it's cool but what's crazy though saying people will retweet every rumor oh uh, you know they're gonna have a show coming up in september they always have a show they said that last year september yep. rolled around we didn't see shit right? so it's like bro what we doing man so yeah. i'm very upset right. about it no i'm i'm with you on that jack i was gonna say uh was it, david do you want to chime in yeah, I'd just like to make the announcement as an insider that they're going to have a showcase sometime between now <laughs> and the next time they have a showcase. <laughs> Thank you, David. I appreciate that. You guys heard it here first at Crossfire. Jay Bari, you heard what Jack just said. Are you with Jack on this? I got to tell you, I, oh, maybe yeah, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm 100% with Jack. Okay, I was say, maybe it's because I'm just old-time gamer. That's what we were privy to having, and now they just take it away. I do think we need to see... The show. I don't necessarily think because they haven't given us the show, as long as the games keep coming out, but I don't like the state, the state of plays and the Nintendo directs. I, I, and maybe you guys won't like that, that opinion of me. They're okay, but that's like, it's just, it's lukewarm. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, you know, it's like, all right. I, mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in a hundred percent. I'm in 100% agreement with Jack. I think PlayStation needs to do a show. I do like the state of plays and I like what they do you know, the specific state of place for like a game or whatnot, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to know what first party is doing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I don't like the fact that PlayStation is so close to the chest when it comes to first party, like, you know, Spider-Man supposed to come out this year, 
we're in April, but we still ain't even see a new trailer for this motherfucker yet. I don't know what the, you know what I mean. This this they is not happening like on the man. They were not always yeah, like that. It's not happening on the PlayStation. PlayStation Four. You knew the you knew everything. You know you knew what's coming out in the present. You know what's coming out in the future. Three years, two years. You know when it comes to uh you know the PlayStation Four games are the exclusives, but I do feel like they do a great job when it comes to third party and them. They're they're uh. Their their uh you know exclusive deals and stuff like that. I, mm-hmm. I do feel like they do a good job televising and let people know about those games. Yes. But for some strange reason, it's just first party. That's the main reason why I want to show. You know what I mean? What is these? What are these studios creating? You just bought Haven. We don't know what the fuck they doing. You just got <laughs> Firewalk. We don't know what the fuck they doing. Nope. You got Deviation Games in the background. Save us Deviation Games. You're my only hope. We don't know what the fuck you doing. You know what I mean? You got uh, your own PlayStation Studios, London Studios, uh, Sucker Punch, all these goddamn studios, and we don't know what the fuck they are doing, and we are three years into this generation. I need a show, and I need it right now. Whatever is May, when it's June, I need that goddamn show, and I need first part to be present. Present. That shit need to be at least an hour and a half present, letting us know what the hell's coming to the PlayStation 5 in the future. I can't really argue with you on that one at all. So I'm going to go here real quick. Eric, I got to ask you. So here we are. Twisted Metal trailer. Twisted Metal probably being one of my favorite games from back in the day. Being a kid playing that, I, I'm not going to tell you how many hours I lost in that. Saw the trailer. I don't know where I'm at right now. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, for every, and you know, I think I shout out to Paul Tassi who did this article. You know, for every Last of Us, you're going to have a show like this as well. Do you think right. this Twisted Metal game or show on, uh, I think it's debuting on Peacock. Sometime in July, uh, how is this going to be received by gamers? Because if gamers don't receive it well, we're, we're the ones I feel are the catalyst to promote this thing and get the, the grassroots out to get our coworkers, our friends to check it out. I think a lot of gamers got their friends to watch The Last of Us. Um, not to say it wasn't a big hit. HBO also spent like a fortune on it. Uh, I don't think Peacock's going to do that with Twisted Metal. E, what was your take when you saw the trailer? I think the trailer overall was fine, but they're on Peacock. They're already losing. <laughs> <laughs> like, Are y'all on like Peacock, man? <laughs> Jack. No, it's not even that. It's just like trying to keep I up with all the Peacock. different like subs. Like you just like don't even have a sub to Peacock, you know? So let so me just, so let me say this. So because I heard what Jack said, I'll, I'll tell you this much. Oddly enough, coming from me, because I don't have like Disney Plus or any of that stuff. But it was funny. I was just looking through. And I don't know if this deal's still there, but I had it a while ago. There was, uh, I think, last Halloween uh, that that new the new Halloween movie was coming out, and oddly enough, it yeah, was on yep, Peacock, yep, right? It was on Peacock. So yep. I so I checked it out, and it, and Jack, tell me if you got the same deal. I signed up for a year for twenty dollars, not a month, twenty dollars, nineteen ninety nine. Now year? I, for the year, wow. but, if, you can, if, you, if you have Xfinity, it's free. I don't Peacock have Xfinity. only good for the wrestling. That's it. Yeah, and he, and he got the WWE Network. Peacock is nice, man. It got yeah. some. You got newer movies, 4K, HDR. All that. Hey, man, Peacock it, is nice. It has it been actually. Be Paramount, it has been a, a much of a surprise. Oh, I ain't gonna lie. Better than Paramount. I think it's better. Than Paramount. So, so, I, like oh, Paramount Plus, I got. I got Paramount Plus through T-Mobile. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> like the app is works terribly. Like the app is definitely. Like, hard. Yeah, it's slow. It's oh, definitely slow. Paramount Plus reminds me of like CBS. In the nineties, them old, <laughs> old PBL <laughs> shows, picket fences, yeah. and all that like, shit. Like, I mean, they, they got the new Beavis and Butthead. I'm gonna check that out. Like that. But I just can't go into the app. Man. Like, a, oh. I love how we're talking about all these like obscure like like streaming services that we don't like. And Jack Jack's over here like, damn, we don't. You guys don't like yeah. this. You don't like that. Yeah, it's, like next, like it's, like it's, it's like next thing you know, he's like, damn, soul. you guys don't like Boost soul. Mobile. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like it, man. I don't know. Now, nah, PlayStation uh, need to consolidate these goddamn uh, these shows, man. You got to subscribe to HBO, yeah, Peacock, you know, Amazon, uh, it, just to Netflix. get to all of the goddamn, oh, goddamn shows. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. No, that's that's, that's that's big facts. And that, that's the whole thing, too, with the whole, like, subscription model. It's like, you know, the whole idea was, like, we're going to cut the cord. That's brilliant. I can I don't have to pay the cable fee. Now it's like, you mess you around with, more. like, too many Listen, stuff. Yeah, you're paying more. We are paying more you know? than when it was just a simple cable bill. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you are. If you crazy. cut your cable, oh, somebody yeah. splice it back together. Please. Because I miss it. At the end of the day, no. too, at the end of the day too, you want the best deal, right? Like, personally, when it comes to these, these, uh, these streaming services, 
I don't do the monthly. I do the yearly because I'm like, right, you save money. Up, the yearly is much cheaper than the monthly. You know what I mean? Facts. So you're paying like a hundred and change here, a hundred and change. It's just crazy, man. It's, it's easier to keep up with that way, too. And that's the whole thing, like subscription service fatigue, you know? And I think, again, that's, you know, not, I'm not trying to go back to like, like we're picking on Xbox, but it's like adding another sub service is something people, that's another uphill battle. Well, you we know. said we were going to start to have like that bubble was going to burst. I don't think necessarily the bubble burst, but you could see now in just on the panel right now. Oh, I elect not to get Paramount Plus. Oh, I'm not going to get Peacock or I'm not going to get HBO Max. Or, I'm not going to get. We have to pick and choose because if you do get yeah. all of them, I got news for you, man. That, that, that's a hefty little bill you got yourself there for, for TV. No, for uh, and then when Absolutely. you have now you have gaming subscriptions and it's like when you when you're a casual and you've got. Peacock, HBO Max, you've got Disney Plus, go down the entire line. And then they, they got like subsets, right? Like AMC Plus, CBS this. You know what I mean? It's like they got all these different. So it gets costly. So, so would a casual want to pay $15 a month for Game Pass when they play just Call of Duty and just NBA 2K? Probably not. You know what I mean? That's why you saw Phil say we kind of plateaued on the Xbox. Because at this point, it's like whoever wanted it has it. It, they haven't mm-hmm. announced numbers since early last year. And, and, and there's I mean, a reason. That's why, like, I, you know, going back to the Activision thing for just a second, it's Blizzard, like, all these, like, PC games, PC's huge, huge. So, of course, they want to they wanna try to dive into the PC route as well. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, subscription services. Anyway. Yeah, that, it, really, honestly, you, that, that Excel you had there, Bab, it is true. It's, it's annoying as hell. It really, really is. Um, yeah. And then I got to ask you guys, because this is kind of get me. I'll go to Jay Bari. Jay Bari, this is kind of, we were talking about how much we enjoyed Burning Shores, right? We saw the gameplay earlier on the show. Metacritic, the, the, the user scores were getting review bombed. And Metacritic has basically said that they're going to, you know, kind of formulate a system or an algorithm to be able to figure out how to not have it. So you can just go in there and just put, it sucked zero, right? So where are we with Metacritic, Jay? As a whole... You know, as far as the reviewers go on the professional side, and, and what what are we doing now with the user side, where you can anybody can just go in there, land, uh, you know, make a hundred different accounts, put a hundred zeros in there, and it basically it skews anybody from wanting to go there to take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, I always looked at Metacritic as something. I think Metacritic is useful; it has its purpose. Yes, but you just got to know what you're. You got to know what the service is about. You got to know what you're looking for. Like, obviously. Everything is not going to be uh, aggregated the same way when you're reviewing a PlayStation game and an Xbox game. You have different sites that specifically review games, so the score might fluctuate and be different in that. If you understand that purpose and that, that if you understand that functionality of the website, you're going to be good. It's just the aggregate of a whole bunch of sites that it review. I don't, I don't necessarily use Metacritic to, deter- to determine me purchasing a game, but I do think it has its uses. But one thing I'll say that I don't give a fuck about no user score. Who the I don't care about no user score. You Metacritic, you don't gotta change shit. Nobody give a fuck about no user score. You know what I mean? I don't know who goes over there. Let me look at the user score, see what's happening. Nobody does care about that bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. People just do that right now because it's a buzz thing to talk about in their in their articles or whatnot. But at the end of the day, Horizon could have been a zero zero user score. I wouldn't give a fuck, to be honest with you. That's just me personally. But that that yeah, you know, and, and I always tell people that user score means nothing because there's no verification. Like you know, like when I see something on Amazon, somebody say something's bad on Amazon, you see that oh, it's verified. It, you got to be verified that you bought this purchase. Yeah, yeah. That don't happen over there on on Metacritic. So my mind says I was I don't really give a fuck about what anybody says. Yeah, also, anybody that is uh, review bombing Horizon, uh, you know, burning shores, I implore you go outside, talk to your college or. or, or High school flame. Uh, talk to a female. You know, go out there. <laughs> go out. Uh, get live outside. Life. Get outside. Yo, you'd be, no, you'd be surprised. They, they, they review bombing right. because of the decision that you make it during the end of the, the yeah. thing. But at the yeah. end of the day, the decision you don't have to have to do that. You don't have to do that action. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, just, I just go is. go talk to someone opposite gender. I I, I implore you. You know, go out there. <laughs> uh, I gotta ask. I gotta just ask. talk to people. Talk Honestly, to people. it doesn't even matter. Just talk to people. Yo, go outside, out of the bubble. It's okay. The sun doesn't burn you. Uh, just go out there, man. You know? <laughs> my, my issue is, like, why people are so <laughs> quick? 
to ruin and spoil PlayStation games. They do it with every PlayStation game. They do game. it with everything Hor- because people Horizon. don't want anybody to be happy. They just want everybody to be miserable like them, you know? Nobody mm, nobody crazy. gave a shit about, uh, what is it, you know, um, uh, Commander Shepard, you know, uh, uh, kissing Garrus on the mouth because they're all weirdos like that. They want to see inter-alien, you know, I don't know, <laughs> relations. But as soon as, you know, they introduce a queer character in a game somewhere, uh, you get these weirdos online that make it their personality to go, oh, this is some type of weird propaganda. It's like, well, maybe you're just closed minded, you know, maybe mm. maybe go out there and meet someone that's different than you for the love of God. Yeah. I, I hate those people. Or just don't choose that option. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 yeah. it's three dialogue options they give you. The guy trying to choose which one that don't give you the option. They're already a, they were already pissed off that they were playing as a woman. Like <laughs> seriously, that's oh, how yeah, these yeah, yeah. these losers' mentalities are. Uh, I, I I hate them. I, no, I, I gotta I, ask. I truly you, I gotta at the end of the day, mooch. Yeah. Don't care about meta. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Use Jay, score. Jay, that's honestly, it. and I'm glad you said that because Jack, I gotta say, I after I follow you on Twitter. Listen to you on Weapon Wheel. Jack, honestly, do you care about other gamers' reviewer scores when you go to pick up a game? Uh, no, not, not necessarily. I do respect Metacritic and what they brought to the community, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, because we always like to, you know, brag and boast when our favorite games get a high score. Okay. So you yep. got to respect it when some yep. of the games you're looking forward to get a low score. You can't, you can't have the good without the bad, That's right. man. So, um... I respect it. User score, you know, some, and sometimes a user score might be, you know, a game might have a lower score than you expected, but you go see the user score, like, hold on, people really fucking with this game. Hold on, it might, it might not be that bad. But then, like I said, with the bad, you get the other times where they they use it to to promote an outrage or something going mm-hmm. on with the game, and it don't really deserve that score. You know, like um, my man said, you know, these people are. It might be mentally, you know, they might be a little mentally unstable. You know, it ain't that deep, bro. You know, it's, it's just not that deep, bro. Like, like Jay Barry said, you ain't got to do what you upset about. Yeah. So either play the game or don't. But I'm not, I've never been dead upset to where I get on. Hold on, let me get on here and get to, get this game a zero. Real. Like, what the fuck? Like, you look crazy, dude. Yeah. It don't bro. even cross I'm my mind. Not that motivated, it doesn't even I'm cross my mind. Bro. Like, I don't even think about that. That does not even cross my, even if we have this, we're having this conversation now. The next game I go to buy. It never crosses my mind to do that, ever. Like, same thing yeah. when we go to, listen, you go to a restaurant, right? The food was bad. I don't go home and write a review. I just don't go back to the restaurant. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, yep. there's people who go yep. back and they're like, oh, my God, this asparagus was horrible. What? what? <laughs> you're writing a review about like, just don't go back. And those people that you're out there dining with, they're the worst. My brother does that. My brother is the is the yeah. one that'll be. He's like the chef Gordon Ramsay all of a sudden. <laughs> and he's like <laughs> describing his plate. He's taking a picture of it. I go, Dan, it's not that serious. It's- Just relax. <laughs> this is a Chili's. You know. I was just gonna say. Yeah. You're like yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. asparagus. You're like it's a. What did you mean? That's you're like it's a chicken wrap. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, no, honestly, great show tonight, guys. I promised these guys two hours like I usually do. I mooched an extra 20 minutes out of them. Uh, this is a fantastic show, guys. I really, I had a fun night. Uh, this is how we kick off the gaming weekend here. Hey, we Mooch, can I ask you a question? Please, were, were we, were we uh, professional this week? Uh, very. Actually, uh, <laughs> like, over the top. <laughs> over the top. Um, absolutely. Yeah, well, listen, hey, Crossfire, you know, one out of ten... Usually the wheels will fall off once in a while, but you know I think the audience likes that Jay. You know they like a little bit of oh, back nah, and it, forth. It was it was fun. It was fun. I'm <laughs> Jay, very professional by the way. I'm gonna end every week's with a professional rating. Uh, tonight's was a solid nine. I got to give you guys a nine. What do you think, Jay? Is nine too low or Metacritic wise? Ten out of ten. Yeah, I think that's a little too low. Okay, my apologies. I guess I review bombed you. I apologize yeah. right here on now and live. Uh, no, great show tonight, guys. Outstanding to have everybody. I can't wait to actually. Try out the Star Wars game. Again, shout out and thank you so much to Button Basher. I appreciate that code. That was very, very cool. Uh, that being said, let me go in reverse order here. Uh, the great David Faulkner who joined us. David, outstanding resources. Thank you for deep diving and doing all of that work and reading for us so we don't have to go through 420 pages. I got the Cliff's Notes version of that. Uh, but David, let everybody know where they can find you on Twitter or any of your social spaces. And thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me um, and allowing me to speak. The uh, yeah, so you can find me on Twitter at Forky eighty seven. 
Um, you can find me poking around on a few different uh, podcasts when uh, when the information's needed. Um, but other than that, thanks for having me. Great to chat with all these legends on the show tonight and uh, have a good weekend. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. And the great Mr. Bad Bet who came in a little earlier than he said he was, which just for me, mm. that's a perk. I loved every second of it. Uh, Bad Bet, great to have you on the show. Love your takes on gaming. Uh, I will be hitting you up May 2nd. We'll run through a little uh, Red Fall, see how that goes. But Bad oh, Bet, yeah. let people know where they can find you. And I didn't get, because you came in a little late, let everybody know about the trophy room, please. Oh, yeah. Listen, I hope I made sense because today I've been out just outside in heat all day long working my butt off so it's nice to get cooled off in here but that said you can find me over at mr badbit on twitter you can find my show the trophy room a playstation podcast made by the players for the players where each and every thursday me and my best friend kyle talk about the latest the greatest in all things playstation of course this week we talk about the firewall purchase we talk about the you know a cma deal all that chaos in between so you can find that there at the trophy room show on youtube on apple Podcasts, on spotify all that good stuff and at ps trophy room on twitter and again thank you guys for inviting me as an incoherent as i feel i was tonight because uh, david came on and he's like i got stats and statistics and i'm like i'm gonna yell into the mic about you know i'm gonna yell into the god mic. knows what but yeah, no, thank you for having me, guys. It's been terrific. Great, great to have you, Bad Bit. Uh, Jack, Jack, honestly, I had a blast tonight, man. And uh, I love getting your take. And I, I love it when you just are out there. You say what's on your mind. That's what Crossfire is built on. I know Weapon Wheel does the same thing, so it's just great. I love it when you say, listen, this is what other people are saying. They're all full of it. This is the actual truth. So, Jack, I'm glad you could come here and smack the truth down. Uh, let people know where they can find you. And I can't wait to have you back on the show again real soon. Man, I appreciate it, man. Dope podcast. And uh, like you said, I, I'm going to say this. Compared to Weapon Wheel, this was a very professional show, okay? Uh, <laughs> but uh, y'all can find me, man, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Jack Move Johnny. You know what I mean? I, I stream stream games all the time. But uh, appreciate y'all boys, man. And uh, yeah, dope show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. And then the great Eric Jackson. E, you know, the voice of reason. And let me tell you, you did exactly what your job title is, man. You are outstanding on Twitter. You keep everybody sane. And you kept the, uh, I think you kept the chat in check too. E, uh, let everybody know where they can find you. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Oh man, uh, again, thanks Moose for having me. Uh, great panel. Love chopping it up with you guys. You know, uh, yeah, man, just try to keep it, try to keep it level-headed, man. It's like, you know, the guys say, there's no reason to get like this bent out of shape over games and stuff, mm -mm. man. Like I'm wild, wild stuff. Like way out this stuff. It's like, it's not that <laughs> serious, you know, uh, in particular to microsoft it's not your company like they have things to worry about you don't have things to worry about like that facts true uh, well i just say no great show great chat and again thanks for having me now i'm glad i was able to finally make it thank you so, e. appreciate you being here and then the great jay barry jay you know listen i know you're gonna probably grab something to eat you're gonna do a little game and you gotta get some rest you got a long podcast tomorrow with the great gaming with persona jay thanks for being here tonight buddy let people know where they can find you absolutely man i appreciate the invite um you know shout out to everyone that came through man make sure you hit the like button and uh you know give us your thoughts or whatnot on the show but yeah you can find me jbari underscore on uh twitter jbari on youtube and also uh i host with my my bro uh persona uh what's up playstation podcast every saturday 11 a.m eastern time just want to chill and, and vibe out there uh you can but also Definitely don't miss Weapon Wheel this Sunday as well, man. And I hope you guys are American because oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be man. Gonna be some fuckery, man. I ain't gonna need a lot of y'all, man. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be crazy, yeah, man. That's, 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 that's a can't there. miss, Jeff. <laughs> man. Yeah, you know what I mean? But uh nah, man. At the end of the day, man, hopefully there's a lot of games out here right now. Um, uh, you know, I understand the CMA talk is 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 fine and dandy, but yo, this this there's there's collections. Legacy collections, Star Wars, uh, DLC burning show. There's so much stuff to play out here, man. Max, yes. Try to play these games and give your thoughts on these games, man, at the end of the day. But, yo, and also, you, you know what I mean? Shout out to Jack, man. He does stream a lot a lot of the games. You know what I mean? That's why you always have my support, man, because he's actually yes, doing something in the community, playing games. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, it is frowned upon, though. You know, playing games in the game <laughs> community is not a... Yeah, it is. Hey, it is frowned upon. the games you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He, you wouldn't, it, you wouldn't believe it, brother. You wouldn't believe it. Playing mainstream. Wild, man. <laughs> but nah, man. Uh, that's pretty much it.
Enjoy the rest of your night, man. Appreciate you, Jay. And then, of course, the great Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. He had to step off early. He wrote me, he goes, Mooch, I got to go. Take care of the kids. Hey, Brap, you take care of family. Family first. So check out Brap. Brap Podcast for Wednesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern time. I was on last week's show with the great David Faulkner. So go over and check that out. And Nicholas couldn't make it, but check out Nicholas. It's at Nicholas, and then I think it is a GP Media. So go over and check him out. Uh, Nicholas Downey probably couldn't get away tonight, but we, we love the guy. He does great, great work for... Um, Oh, pardon me, lordsofgaming.net. So shout out to Nicholas as well. And guys, I just got to say, overall, outstanding show. Just had a lot of fun. Great chat, great panel. Guys, I had one more, uh, True Witty, I apologize. Sony needs their own TV subscription service. No, True Witty, we don't need another no. subscription service. We're good. Oh, yo, Mooch. We are good, yes. Uh, Psychic Gaming said he mad at you because you're skipping their super chats, as you should, though. But uh, Wait, I just want to let you know that. Oh, you, did, uh, who'd I did skip? That. Who'd I skip? Cycle? Yeah, Cycle Gaming. He mad that you skipped. Oh, I apologize, chat. Cycle. I I apologize. I did. I went right over it. I apologize. He says a lot of misinformation, misunderstanding here. PlayStation deal was to keep Call of Duty on PS4 ten years. Nintendo and Nvidia signed the deal to bring Call of Duty to the platform. Cycle Gamer, I apologize, man. Make sure you're here next week in the chat, man. Anything you type in there, I make sure I'll read it out loud. I appreciate it. I'm very sorry. Yeah, we good. We, but you know what it is? They're just, there's like, they're all on this like small screen. I can't see shit on that screen. I got to blow up the print. So Cycle, I apologize, man. That's, that's a me problem. I'm, I'm, with you, I'm with you, Mooch. Listen, if I saw that super chat, I'd have skipped that shit. But, uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cycle Gamer. I appreciate you guys. You guys are all great. Uh, we'll be on uh, next Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, as we always are. And we're going to be streaming on Twitch.tv. Mooch TV, as Jack said, can you believe it? We're actually streaming games. So it's M00CHTV, drop the O's for zeros. It's the same on YouTube. It's the same on Twitch. It's the same on Twitter. That being said, enjoy your weekend. Have fun. Game. And as Mr. Badbit said, touch a little grass. That can't hurt as, as well either. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys and peace out. It's making Zuba!